what the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. And one more coming. Yeah. Get in here, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back for All Things Scientology, where we pull back the curtain on the abusive practices of Scientology. We are your hosts, Claire Headley and Amy Scobie. <laughs> and as you can see, we have special guests tonight, which is my husband, Matt Pesh. And my husband, Mark Headley. Yes. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> yeah, so the first thing that uh, we wanted to do was uh, cover the highlights of the week since our last broadcast. And there was a lot that went on this week. And I have slides for this, too. So I'm going to get these pulled up here. And we should comment, <clears throat> this is only half of the picture, because this is what we're showing you. The other half went on. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. is in the works and will be discussed at the appropriate times. <laughs> at a later <laughs> appropriate date. Yes. That's right. That's right. Well, one of the first things um, from this last week, because you've been asking and asking, is how is Mike? And Mike Rinder did a, an update this week. And so on his blog is a video with him and Christy, and he gave a beautiful update. And um, the comments on that have just been amazing and wonderful. Yes, agreed. So that was really, really great to see. And then another thing is the never inners <laughs> um, have done chatathons for Mike all night chatathons, and wow. it's with Den Denver Stevo, Marilyn, Juliana Bittencourt, and Clearwater Chad with other special guests. Like in this picture, you can see Mark Headley and Mark Fisher in there, and. Um, it was should... so much fun. Oh it my was... gosh! Yes. I did. I watched it. I think I went in for just an hour, mm -hmm. and um, they'd already been going for a few hours when I showed up, yeah. and um, and yeah, we had a blast. And they made a video. Denver Stevo edited a video that a lot of um, viewers of all the different SPTV channels um, sent in, like uh, well wishes for Mike. Mm -hmm. um and um it was very very good i loved it i cannot um they were supposed to send me a link so that i could share it with mike and yeah. uh christy but i don't i think maybe they're still tweaking it or something i haven't gotten one so or, but or maybe they've been sleeping since then because i just got <laughs> well, an email from them of the giveaways so <laughs> oh yeah okay yeah that's <laughs> yeah. true they were doing it it was 10 hours through, straight through the night wow. through yeah. the night yeah, yeah. And, they, and all kinds of guests would pop in like kelly copter and different people yeah yes. um, and I saw the compilation that they did. It makes you cry. Oh, I mean, my gosh. So I was bawling. I was I literally mean, how much, sobbing. How much do you love this community? I mean, it's everyone amazing. is so, amazing. so caring and so amazing. It just makes my heart full. I know. And when Mike's just going to be overwhelmed when he sees that. He really he is. is. Amy, um, Mark and I did a live the other day, and I said very sincerely, my fa my personal favorite category of this community is never ends and the reason yeah. why is because um you know i was just so inspired by people that are they had no skin in the game so to speak no no personal knowledge you know but they had their own experiences and the fact that they were willing to come to the table and share their voices just made me feel like who am i to be afraid right <laughs> you know honestly yeah. like why why am i afraid like mm -hmm. these people inspired me it were a huge part of what inspired me to speak out in the first place so yeah, yeah. that's fantastic yeah. and it's it goes the same for me when anonymous was making an international stand yeah you know and they were and the they, they were the really first huge never in category <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and, they, and that, that that is what i was talking about i was just not limiting it to anonymous because it's yes, grown yes. very broad since then but yeah. yes <laughs> and oh my gosh and anyway Oh, the work that Denver Sebo, Marilyn, and all those were are, have been doing is just so appreciated, you guys. It's just fantastic. It is. Um, then the next thing is that Claire, that uh, Claire, let's go back to the slides here. It'll be this one. Claire did an interview with Andrew Gold. Yep. And this was covering what there, 
Claire? Uh, this was talking about my experience as uh, testifying as an expert witness in the Danny Masterson trial. I'm <laughs> just reading the description. Claire Headley, ex-Scientologist who downed Danny Masterson. <laughs> <laughs> I saw <laughs> that. Like, okay. I love Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, not, not shy with the, uh, with the, with the uh, descriptions there. <laughs> no, I saw that. That's why I kept it in the thumbnail. I loved it. That's great. <laughs> so crazy. It and was, then you it did, was a great yeah. discussion though yes. i realized after the fact the one piece we forgot to talk about was the the cringeworthy attempt by scientology to undermine my testimony by naming my stepfather yeah. as the ex quote expert witness he we knew signed over guardianship of me when i was 16 years old and they did that just to be sleazy. Yeah, it as was soon so as sleazy. As soon as his name was on their witness list, I told I told everybody. I mean, I was just I knew one hundred percent. I was like, that dude will never take the stand in a million years. Claire, I mean, if you put him and Claire in a room and they had to debate each other, I mean, <laughs> they, yeah, I don't think they realize. Like when you're in, when you go to the top of Scientology management. You are an expert in literally verbally destroying somebody. <laughs> like just in just in terms of your thought process and how yeah. you know with, with a smile on your face, no yeah. Yes. With with without even cracking a smile, you you're trained you you Amy, you, you know this is oh, true. Yeah. You oh, you're yeah. trained. You are if you the meaner you are, the more you'll get promoted. Like oh, yeah. the the more you know, I don't even know how to say it because you could turn it on and then you can just go back to whatever you're doing, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to, for her, 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 her um, stepdad or ex stepdad or whatever you want to call it, he is um, he's literally like a, a fuddy duddy, like, like, doo -doo -doo -doo. like it, there's it, it, anyway, I knew he thing. would never. Yeah. Yeah. There was no not, way. And not to mention the fact I love how osa completely destroyed our family they oh. did that when we escaped in 2005 and now in 2023 they expect to still have some kind of leverage impact control or yeah. anything i mean what oh. world what what universe do they live yeah. in it's insanity yeah. they anyway. didn't even have him show up at the courthouse at all right no they, they just, did not yeah they just announced honestly that honestly if they would have i can't say i would have noticed <laughs> oh god <laughs> well that's just the funny, to be honest <laughs> well that's the funny thing and also just to people watching this video like you think claire oh yeah she's just a nice she's very she does great interviews and she loves she's a very good listener and all mm -hmm. absolutely but yes. if she wants to be the most evil person that you've ever <laughs> met that's Bring not it that, on. that's that's not like a process that's a split second switch over okay Funny. i don't know about that <laughs> no i'm i'm positive that you could Funny, like in, mental mentally i don't think that hugh could compare in in, yeah. a, in a lifetime to the you know being quick and also just being um, factual. They they like to yeah. get into the blame game and the name calling and the um, attacking and you mm -hmm. just spitting facts. There's just it would just be mm -hmm. no competition. So. Yeah, yeah. There's it was no, obviously yeah. some sort of mental game, which, oh, like yeah. Claire said, it's like um, we haven't talked to these people in 18 years. What do you, yeah. like? Why would? Is it been 18 years now, babe? Yeah, 18 yeah, years. We haven't spoken to these people in 18 years. <laughs> so you think that putting him on the witness stand when also Claire knows. He doesn't know anything compared <laughs> right. to her in terms he, of what goes on in Scientology. He's really been educated. Shows how lame they are. Yeah, yeah, he's been educated to like level one, and she's like seventy seven, and like they're gonna <laughs> he, like he, battle of the battle of the facts. Mm -mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, yeah, no, don't he, think so. He signed over when he signed over guardianship of me, so I could go to the headquarters. As we all know, but for the sake of the audience, he didn't even know where, where that base was physically located. That was yeah. confidential information. So oh, yeah. I was working in a location for 14 years and he had no idea even physically where I was. Right. So, yeah. 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 That was just lame. Beyond yeah. the beyond. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, it was okay. a fun conversation yeah. with Andrew Gold. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good interview, Claire. That was really good. Here's another interview you did this week. This yes. is with 
Hannah Eltringham. That was fascinating. Right? You know what? I, I learned something here. Yep. L. Ron Hubbard's favorite drink was rum and Coke. Yes. I Mo was like, are favorite, you Favorite me? on the rum side. 80% rum, 20% <gasps> Coke. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm like, are you kidding? We had... I mean, how many years did we go without having one drink whatsoever? And here's L. Ron Hubbard. Having... Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, it makes sense, Amy, because have you ever put when when I went to school, we would put a um, a tooth like if you'd lost a tooth, you put it in a cup and you just fill the cup, uh, the cup up with Coke and then you check it in a week. And you know oh. what, what, what? Yeah, it's, it's not there's no there's no tooth there in a week. Yeah. So can you imagine that old fuddy duddy just drinking all that Coke and all that rum? And well, you know, maybe that's he, what happened to his teeth. Well, he was allergic to dentists, so he was just getting rotten his teeth and no one was ever fixing them. So yeah. it's wow. funny that he said that that Hubbard said the reason your eyes go bad is because you've committed crimes. But yet there was no reason ever given as to why your teeth go bad. <laughs> I think it's when you talk too much shit is when your teeth turn to shit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, we're already starting. I wore, I wore waterproof mascara today because I knew this is going to be fun. Okay. I love to torment Amy whenever we meet up. I, I just try to put in that, throw in an extra thing here and there because I know oh, I'm going to get it. It doesn't take much because you <laughs> You just crack me up. You like hit my funny bone. Um, so the yes. next slide. Well, anyway, so that I guess was part one with Hannah. And then you're yes. going to be doing a follow up, right? Because she's yes. got a long history. Oh, and I'd love gosh. to hear about all the work that she did about helping people get out of Scientology. I know. That's what I told her. I said, Hannah, you're like the you're the old guard, the earlier, the pre aftermath foundation person. Mm -hmm. And she's already been sending me some amazing books to read. And she's oh, that's she's still doing it to this day. Like, oh, I didn't realize. Yes. Good. No, she wow. she is like, um, helping people actively. And that's why I was like, I'm so inspired because you know, it really does take a special person to first of all, live through all of that. I'm not negating I'm not negating anybody's experience. Oh. But then to go to the next step, let me expose them. And then to go to the next step even after that and go I care enough to help people get out of that and yeah. not only to just speak out against it but to help people get out. And we need so much more of that because uh yeah, the 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 walls are crumbling. I don't know what yes. else to say. Yes. And, and anyone really who's do. watching and the walls are crumbling around you, we are here. Yes. So, completely. you know, on each yep. of our uh, YouTube channels, it gives you contact links and everything like that. And and people are contacting us. Yep. So it's just not something that we talk about every day, but it does happen for sure. Yeah. Like one example, mm -hmm. I would love to see replicated what Jeff Hawkins is doing, Jefferson Hawkins mm -hmm. is doing in where he lives in Portland, Oregon, Portland. right? Where he's has a uh, he started this support group, and I think it's just amazing because people really do like. I don't know personally. I feel yes, there's th there's just such therapy in talking with people who understand and who do not judge you for walking away. And then mm -hmm. in the case of Mark and I, there's also true therapy in just shutting it off every once in a while. Like yeah, let's not yeah. let's not say the word Scientology for a week. Whoever says it first gets to put a dollar in the dollar jar. <laughs> yes. You or guys Scientology. Probably, yeah, you guys probably have that maybe. <laughs> well, we have a thing on the Scientology words because it's just so funny. Some of them, they just roll off. There's certain ones yes. that are so hard to get rid of. Yes. Like he calls people terminals. <laughs> terminals? Oh, that's true. Like, oh, I need a... I need to find a terminal over down at the uh, end of the lumber yard. <laughs> who's your terminal there? <laughs> yeah, who's your terminal there? <laughs> Every once was... in a while, I'll tell uh, Claire, like, you know, something will happen or something won't go the way I want it. And I'll be like, hmm, might be some evil purposes there. <laughs> <laughs> or he'll be like, you have CIs. Yeah, CIs. Which is, a, which is a play on CI, counter intention. And for but, everyone yeah. listening who we've completely lost, if you yeah. have counter intention, you're against um, command, command intention, intention, which is yeah. what you're trying to get done. And if you're not getting it done, it's because you have counter 
against intention against that. <laughs> yeah, but yes. the and foreigners. So it's CI. Yeah, but the foreigners would say CIs because mm -hmm. it's literally counter intentions. And instead of just saying you're CI, they would say you have CIs. And so, <laughs> so that's what I would say to Claire. I would say, oh, CIs, CIs. <laughs> and sometimes, what would they say? They would always mess up the sayings. Cake oh, in the say, air. I, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to touch that with a tin football. Yeah. Or, um, or roll up my arms and get to work. Yeah, roll up my arms and get to work. <laughs> or and, and or another, is, another good one. The shit hit the vent. Yes. <laughs> this is such cake in the air. And you're like, cake in the air? And they're like, yes, we're never going to get it done. You go, pie in the sky. Pie in the sky. <laughs> please, please. And the best one was... This is, uh, we got to get fast like a bent leather from hell. <laughs> and you're like, what? What did I say? What are we talking we're about? We're going to hell for belt leather. Yeah, we're going to hell for belt leather. And you're like, See, something is getting lost in translation here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's see the next yes. slide. So, um, oh, this is good news. Um so bombshell Scientology lawsuit accuses David Miscavige of covering up child sexual assault by top church leader. So suck it. Oh, <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> we, it's it's been going on for so long that that I am so happy that this this lawsuit has been called because um, this is something that has been going on for a very, very long time since since the day I practically walked into Scientology and probably before. Yes. In 1978, that was um, where they cover up uh, sexual assault and they, you know, keep it within like we handle our own. Nothing goes to the police. So this isn't this is now a court case. And David Miscavige is specifically named in it, which is really good. Yes. Because yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was just going to say, so Mark, Mark and I were talking last week about the 5,000 spy files that we oh have. My. And there are more instances in there that we have, we have isolated and sent to the appropriate people. Um, like it's, it's just horrific. The I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do a video. Thank you, Mark, for sending those over that had my name in it. Yeah. I sent <laughs> um, them to everyone in the files that I've come across so far, any, like as, if I come across Amy Scobie, then I just search all the files for Amy Scobie. And mm -hmm. then I put all of those files into a folder and then share it with the person. So I've mm -hmm. shared probably two, 300 files already mm -hmm. just with individuals wow. because I mean, you guys actually have, you might have more files than Claire and I, I think there was, um, there was a lot, you had a lot actually. Well, I thank but, you for the work that you're doing to get that made known to the gen different people. And I just got to say, Scientology, <laughs> your OSA files are in our hands and they aren't good. <laughs> they're not good at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. I mean, they're, they're, we, wow. we were, we were like, whoa. Would you, to, did you quote, go through them? Did you go yes, through them? Isn't it? Yes. Isn't it crazy? Yes. Like quote, uh, a Denver program. Studio. Yeah. a program yeah. on how to ruin someone's life mm -hmm. like yeah. Oh, yeah. almost totally all them. these people had programs step by step this is how we're going to get you fired at your job this is how we're going to spread rumors about your for, to your neighbors mm -hmm. this is how Lies. we're going to yeah just all made up work this mm -hmm. is what we're going to do this is our plan and this is it step by step and these are mm -hmm. who the targets are assigned to and mm -hmm. you know you're just like this is insane and it's this totally is how we're going to use our top celebrities to destroy this person utterly, mm -hmm. like John Travolta, Tom Cruise, you know, I, I mean, it's horrific. And to quote yeah. Denver Stevo, oh, this smells like poo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what do. these documents show. <laughs> it's really so does. bad. It's, it's going to be really so good to, to continue to expose it, you know. Um, and then plus, this was, it was during the years where it was, I was almost, I was like an angel <laughs> and they had all this stuff going on. I was just saying hi to people. I wasn't even, you know, acting up really. Oh, I, none of us imagine? had written. Yeah. None of us had written books. 
None of no. us. We were telling each other stories. We weren't yes, even. We it. weren't even. Well, I mean, I was posting stuff on the internet, but and so but, were we, just undercover. But know? almost all the files are talking about. Oh, they went to this party, and then they went to yeah. Outback, and then they went yeah. to this place, and they had pictures. Who they're did, talking to? Wasn't it crazy the when they had the pictures and the maps? Those are all the pictures I took. I took those pictures, and because I crazy? had shared them with people, and one of them. Yeah. Who was there? Wolfie was the spy. So he turned him into Scientology. And yeah. then they had all these, here's our confidence. You know, oh, I was like looking at these pictures going, oh God, that came from my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Does that qualify as a type of terrorism when you're like, like actually, you know, going after people's livelihood and, and their families and their, I, you know, I, I don't know about terrorism, yeah. but I do know that you can't use nonprofit funds to destroy people. I'm right. I, like I, full I, out. I don't know like what law over that over. is, but I'm pretty yeah. sure if you're getting <laughs> subsidized by, by the people and the government um, and not paying taxes and all that, you can't spend that money to try it to destroy that. That doesn't qualify with like uh, the public benefit. You know? <laughs> yeah. And when they have a program that says their purpose in these activities is to destroy that person utterly, they have removed plausible de deniability completely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you can't say, oh, listed. I didn't know that was going to happen. Oh, yeah, yes. no, you did. In fact, that was your goal. That's what you were. <laughs> that's what you wrote that you were aiming for. <laughs> yeah, I really I, I really wonder what the OSA programs looked like after we spoke out publicly, you know, because. Boy, oh, my gosh. Because then the crap was really hitting the fan or yeah. the air vent or what. <laughs> yeah. Hitting the vent. Yeah, no. no yes, joke. totally. OK, so then the next thing for we're still on the week of review here is an excellent article by journalist Yashar Ali. Yes. Exclusive Shelley Miscavige and the missing Scientologist, how the LAPD made Scientology's problem go away. And I thought this was really fascinating. It was. And yes. can I just can I just insert for a moment and say that that DMV picture of Shelley 100 percent looks like a prisoner of war photo to me? Yeah, it absolutely is. We're yeah. just fixing where Arby's chewing his bone. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> because it's on the fence, and so it's making tons of noise. <laughs> yeah, that picture. Um, Aaron was even asking, her nose looks like it's crooked in the DMV photo compared to oh. all of the other photos of her. Like really? her nose, I'll have to take her a look nose at that. might be pushed over a little bit or something. It, it, I didn't I mean, notice that. He posted a bunch of pictures next to each other. It's hard to tell, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a bunch that, that I just received that are the similar, same, like over the years uh, yeah. comparison. I'll have to look at those more closely. I mean, you can tell that she is not happy. No, and she's a shell, a shell of her former self. Yes, a yeah. total shell. Wardrobe. Wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> what would you do without your wife? Oh my gosh. No Are you guys sharing one set or you have two sets? <laughs> We're sharing one ear. I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna give you a splitter, Matt, when you uh, No no we, we we have to. <laughs> wow, Amy's going next level. I know. She's inserting yeah. the earbuds. I know. <laughs> we have we have a splitter, except he doesn't know how to put on his earphones. And anything audio visual is just a challenge. <laughs> it's all good. It's in all our good. in our house it's the opposite. Um, I've become pretty good, pretty good, nowhere close to Mark, but my incentive is I don't, I don't want to know, I don't know that I want to ask for help. <laughs> yes. I'd much rather figure it out myself if I can, but every yeah. once in a while, like to, this morning, Mark just went through a lot of work for which I'm incredibly grateful to switch my computer over to a new computer. Yeah, and, and I'll be honest. I might have an electronic file hoarding issue, oh, maybe. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> oh yeah. She had like four terabytes of files. I was like, I can't set up a new computer. We got to get rid of. I got. We got to put all these somewhere. Yeah. Um, so he it, was he was very patient in working through all of that. But this morning when I came down to my office, one of my screens wasn't working, and I was like, 
You know? Oh no, after Mark just spent 20 hours getting this computer set up, so I figured it out on my own. I was like, "Yay me." You tur- <laughs> did you turn it on? Is that what figured is that what figured it out? <laughs> no. Nope. Um I love how um your picture quality actually has seemed to be better since we did all that. I don't oh, think it's ever gone bad or not bad as it was before, so. Yep. Um awesome. Yes. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> we got a thousand people in here now. Yay. Hey, thanks to everybody yeah. for joining us. Oh, and hey, another weekend review item is yeah. um our channel Blown for Good just hit thirty five thousand subscribers. Wow. Yay. Yay. Yes. I gotta go look at that now. I gotta see. Yes. That is really good. And while we're saying oh, yeah. that, we might as well go to the banners here and go um let's see. I have this one. Please like and subscribe to both of our YouTube channels at oh, Who is Amy Scobie and awesome. at Blown for Good. Thank you. We love our amazing SBTV community. We really do. Yes, we do. Yes. Um, so the next thing in the um, week in review was Mitch Brisker, former director of um, at Golden Era Studios, is um, spoke out for the very first time. That is not the slide I wanted, but that's okay. Um, and he, uh, was on with Janice and Mark and, um, did, that was the first time that he had spoken out since leaving. And, um, so that was very interesting. Mark, you know him very well. I know him too. I do. Yeah. Um, I mean, I work with Mitch for many, many years. Um, he also did an interview on Aaron's channel. I think he actually did a part one and a part two on Aaron's channel that are really good too. But um, yeah, we're when I I've got a big project coming up, as you guys know. Um, so probably I I talked to Mitch the other day, and um, we're planning to ha- we're planning to do something when I get back from this next project that I'm working on, and um, we're definitely going to tell some old oh um, filming and adventures and celeb working with celebrities mm-hmm. and whatever whatever we can we we can whip up we'll uh we'll figure it out when uh because i mean i worked with mitch probably for about a decade from about 1995 to 2005 so yeah about a decade yeah. um i was either working directly with him on the film crew or i was the pre-production director or the producer or, you know some other post that dealt with that uh, cinematography division yeah that's amazing um, so that is really good. I look forward to seeing that video. That's for sure. Yes. And uh, so then the next one is, this is the coachman right across from the sandcastle in Clearwater. Wow. And, um, and so it has opened today. They're going to have a grand opening um, event still coming up, but it was opened. Wow. And, coachman wow. Park. Yes, right across from the Sandcastle. So I hope they have huge, loud concerts. I hope there's a million people that just fill the streets there. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, and their whole plan to build a whole new Sandcastle complex. Did you see that was that got all bungled up, too? I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. They were secretly trying to do a new development deal up the street. Yeah. And um, and they it was they got caught and their guy was outed. So they've got nothing. That sandcastle is a giant. Uh, what do they call it? Just a big albatross now. There's nothing. <laughs> oh, well, no. because because they, they can't they use can't, it. Yeah, they can't. You can't even do sessions if like a an ambulance goes by. Much yeah. less there's a concert across the street. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, I was yeah. wondering about that. I hope that's interesting. I hope Clearwater has like a heavy metal, like a uh, heavy metal fest or something over. Yeah, the that would just... be so amazing. <laughs> don't we have pictures of Bobble Mike at that at that location? Oh, I, I think know. so. Let's People see. People have probably sent in. You're right. I think yeah. somebody did send Hold in. Hold on. Let Let's see. Let's see. One second. I well, see. I don't know that you I, have them. Do you have hold them? Hold on. I'm just checking something. One second. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Does she have <laughs> pictures second. like that? Amy's oh, amazing this way. Definitely got her. <laughs> He's at the park now. He's oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> That's ah, awesome. There we go. Yeah. Like an overlay. Mike Bobblehead overlay. I do. You've got to send Mike. that. How can, I, how can you share? you got to make it so you could share things. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I love that. Yeah, that was very cool. And then we're almost done here with the overview. 
And so the next one is a new website. This is awesome because a new website has been made. It's called protestscientology.com. And this is by Stephen, one of our um, wonderful SPTV community members. And um, he created a website where you can buy postcards that go to congressmen and also where is Shelley postcards to go to LAPD. Wow. And um, yeah. And so it was tested and like a hundred postcards were purchased right away because it's something that people can do right away. Wow. Yeah. And so now it's permanent. I just did a video on it. Um, you should check out, everyone should check out the website. So it's protestscientology.com and um, it's got, all of our pictures on there and links to our website to our youtube channels and and everything and it can be expanded too and it, there's also a lot of questions and answers which are awesome as well wow that's, that's great exemption. yes so that was really wonderful steven steven who did that um i think it's hammond is oh, his last name awesome yep Very yep cool yes i think and i saw then, an email about that claire there's an email in the bloom for good email about that okay because yeah, i have a good. i had that site up on my computer today i was like oh, oh look at this I through it, <laughs> yes through and it's something that that people can do and, and it's like a few bucks it. it's we like a, a couple buck depending on what you want to mm -hmm. do it's just a couple yeah. uh, maybe i think it's like 3.99 or 4 depending on what you want to do or who you want to send stuff to yeah. and then you can click your representative or your who exactly yeah. who you want the postcards to go to yeah. and you could select multiple ones and then you just go and then it sends right. them a card you so. put in nice. you put in your address and your congressman automatically comes up yeah there and, you go nice and the other thing is um on my video where I describe this um, in the comments, if you have any suggestions or whatever, Stephen is going through that um, and making any adjustments if you have any trouble with anything. So, yeah, this is kind of being piloted, um, but it's successful and it's going to be definitely something that everyone can contribute to. Nice. Yes. I, I have, I know some, there's a person that reached out to us a while back that had some really good input on that kind of thing. So I think I'll send this to that person good. for any suggestions that they might have that would increase the efficacy of it. Yes, good. Do you want some help? Sure. Okay, so. Oh, <laughs> Matt. Matt. <laughs> it's a, it's a day, for a you, those of you, <laughs> For those of you don't what know. What Amy's going to tell the audience is that now I need a second puppy that really handle this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Matt would be able to put his headphones on if they just had 17 more dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Speaking of puppies, how is Kiwi doing? Right under my feet. It should be on there, right? Oh. Over your ear. I can't see. I don't know. It's close enough. For those of you who don't know, Matt can Matt can lift an oven up by himself. Okay. <laughs> he can just pick it up by both sides and put it in the back of the truck. Okay. True. And oh um, my God. but headphones. No, no, not bad. Not, not so uh, much. He, the he, headphones he, no, are he like. Just, he just enjoys having Amy Mann. I was just going to say. Like, just I like to some of my ears like that. Yeah. It's, it's kind of just. Uh, my thing. <laughs> <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> no, he can do everything. When it comes to electronics, though, I swear. <laughs> Somebody clip that video of her putting those on so my, Matt can just watch oh, it in that's, the loop. that's good. Make it, <laughs> make it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like sometimes his phone rings and he's like, you know, handing it to me as if he doesn't know how to answer it. <laughs> Here, take this. Take this. I, I do, to be fair, I do do that to Claire sometimes, like when I'm in the middle of something and no, my phone rings. I just, I just give it to her. Like, here, just take this. Figure it figure exactly. out. Exactly. That's what I do. So. Yeah. yeah. Sort this out. <laughs> Somebody wants something from me. T yeah. Just tell them. Tell them I'm busy I'm doing busy, nothing. I'm busy. What's his yeah. phone ringing? Yeah. Mark's Tell like, I'm not a person that accepts phone calls. I'll literally, I'll be like, I have a I'm secretary for that. <laughs> yeah, she'll say, I'm busy. I'll say, I'm busy. And she's like, busy, busy doing what? I'm like, busy not taking phone calls. <laughs> uh, he says, I got to give it to my wife app. <laughs> oh my god yeah okay. instead of i have an app for that he, mark's like i got a wife for that <laughs> I got yes. a wife for that. that's exactly right oh and then the very final last news was that it was matt's birthday this week oh my god and you guys had a Yay. pool party look at that that looks like an old, old picture is that recent no no it was a couple years ago oh i was gonna say i was like look at amy's One hair or two one or two years ago one or two nice. or 20 years ago that's Happy how i birthday matt <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes. 66 years old yep. nice happy birthday what did you yes. say 
66. Oh my God, man! You're you qualify for every. You can get coffee at McDonald's for like fifty cents, I think. They give it to me for free. <laughs> for free. <laughs> That's how old I am. That's the same as just getting. They walk. You walk in and it's there, ready for you. <laughs> they don't like, want you have quick, to strain quick, asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's um, well, before we launch into the next, should we do our first giveaway now that we finished yes. our week in review? Yes. Do we want to do, um, which one do you want to do? And I'll pull it up. Um, Let's do, let's about uh, in honor of Mike, let's do bobblehead giveaway first. There we go. <laughs> I love Yay. that. That's so I fun. I, can, yes. I don't know how Amy has all these cool things. Um, Holly, our, one of our community people um, made that and I gave it to Mike too. It's on his channel. Oh, and, nice. uh, and we used it sometimes in our lives together. I've been Perfect. teaching all this. Oh I yeah, think, of course. That know, makes honey, total sense. Honey, I think sense. we have that on the spshop.com. This actual, the overlay? Yeah. This, this, no, um, that's a GIF. If you just put that in, it doesn't do that. You have to make it for StreamYard. You have to make an overlay for oh, StreamYard. That's what I I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. all good. We can do it. We have other overlays. We just don't have a bobble in it. I just, I just yeah. love okay. it. Well, I will email it to you because I have Perfect. it. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So let's do, so who's going to do the countdown? Uh, Mark, I nominate you. Oh, okay. Five. Get, oh, well, I usually I do a little bit of ramp up because some people are, you know, they're on their phone or they have their iPad or they're yeah, on the Apple yeah, or they're it. watching it on Apple TV. So they got to go get a device. Um, right. If you want um, to to get a bobblehead, you got to uh, tell us to bobble me. Um, you know, when I was watching that one of those guys streaming, they're giving yeah. away um, Theta potatoes. Oh, wow. Like it's a crocheted potato. I love it. And I they're giving it. away onions as well. They were have like a peeling the onion. Peel. <laughs> it's a, so it's a crocheted onion. And so I just jumped in there. They were just doing something. And in the comments, it was saying, tater me, tater me. And I was oh, like, I was like, what's amazing. going on? People are telling them to tater me. And then I, <laughs> and I was so like, funny. and then I looked and they're like, oh, and we're okay. We're get, We're going to pick somebody. And I was like, oh, they're giving away a theta <laughs> potato. And people are saying tater me in tater the comments. Me. I was like, for someone who doesn't know what's going on, they're, they're crocheting onions and potatoes. And like, you think this is some sort of a farmer channel or something. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So, so that's enough time for everybody to get there in the comments. So yes, five, yes. four. Three, two, and one. Bugada. Johnny Renda. All right. Johnny Reda. 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 Johnny Reda. Bobble me, please. All right. Nice. Johnny, you got it. Shoot me an email. Claire at blownforgood.com with your address. And Mini Mike will be on his way to you tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. That was oh, pretty awesome. seamless. Pretty yep. seamless. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah, they they really do have a lot of fun on these. Um, they have the SPTV never ends and they have yeah. they do a they do like um it's like a wrap up show. So whatever whoever's live on Monday with Aaron, as soon as that's over, then they have a bunch of people and they just talk about what they talked about in the video that Aaron did. Mm -hmm. Um and they talk about that and then they have different SP never ends from different uh, uh, come on and um, yeah it's real fun it's a uh, you know the giving away crochet things and um, all sorts of <laughs> stuffed things and it's 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 wild I, having a good I time spent some time it. watching and I really really enjoyed it and I, yeah. I just love our whole community is just so fantastic I just absolutely Me love too. it we, yeah. we did a live the other day and I mentioned mystery sandwich and <laughs> why is that a normal thing no, it's not. Well, there's mystery meat, which was a thing from World War II, I think it was, where like cheap meats would be combined with mayonnaise to make a really, really, yeah. And that was called a mystery sandwich? No, it was called mystery meat. Oh, okay. Well, I know, but if you put mystery meat between two pieces of bread, isn't it now a mystery sandwich? <laughs> one, could, one could argue that that would be a logical follow-up. But, you know, but either way, my point being that by the end of the live, I had a design for a mystery sandwich shirt. It was kind of funny. Oh, oh I love it. Yeah, we got to we got to take it easy on the merch. We have we have so many merch things just cuz people keep sending us in new ideas and they're all really great. So we're like Okay, we'll add it. We'll add yeah. it. We'll oh, add so it. Fun. We'll add it. 
I've yeah. been thinking about making a list of different possibilities if I if I did one on my channel too. So it'll be fun. And then also I'll ask the, the community for ideas too. Oh yeah. What they, they would they, want. Yeah. Yeah, they'll design it. That, oh, they're yeah. not oh just going to say, this is what we want. They will send you the artwork for it. So all you have to do oh is just God. upload it to the store and it's, it's merch. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's no, these people, these people are, oh, there's wait, a lot of talent in here in terms of yes, crowdsourcing I stuff. Oh, I've noticed. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Quick comment. Johnny, send me your full address, please. Your email came through, but only the number came through. So please resend that. I'll respond. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes, never mind. Johnny. He did it. He did it. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, we're all. <laughs> you got we're real all time, good. real time merch sending out. Like she's That's gonna right. get up and and package up the bobblehead <laughs> no, in I'm, the video. I'm not okay? gonna do that, but as I'm sitting here, I'm gonna print the label. And, yeah, she's gonna do the whole yes. thing. This is how she gets 17 people's worth of work done. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. my gosh. I know my day is a little bit like. Uh, yeah, I have a whole list of what I'm gonna do in this. Like squirrel. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, well, tonight we were going to talk about answering people's questions about um, did you ever have any fun times in the Sea Org? Oh. Now, people people ask that question a lot. Was there yeah. any good times or any fun times? And Matt and I were talking about it, you know, um, because it's you don't want to just like type an answer. You want to like let's talk about this because it's kind of funny. And um, we were we were um, talking about different things that were fun when we were in the Sea Org, and we were laughing so hard. And I thought, this is a thing that me, you, Claire, Mark needs to be in on and talk about because that some of sounds things... amazing. I would love to. I would love to tell some of those stories. Okay, yeah. well, Matt, you go ahead and start with your early early period there. I mean, the times that we had fun, it was always like short lived and stuff like that, but they did mm -hmm. happen in between everything else. I mean, there was a time at goal when we had good statistics, uh, week ending, what we would do is take the whole crew, divide them in half facing each other in the MCI in the uh, restaurant and have beer drinking races. I heard about it. Wow, this. Yeah. really? Yeah. So you had to drink the beer, then get it down, then the next person grab their beer, get it down, and everybody's cheering and yelling, and people are the beer's coming out their nose, and <laughs> people are throwing <laughs> up. <laughs> the place was going crazy, and we did that for a number of weeks where we had these beer drinking contests, like on races. Friday night or Thursday or Friday nights or on yep. Saturday or when, just like no, after staff meeting or after staff meeting. Okay, so on wow. Friday nights after staff meeting, yeah, just chug contests. Yep. Bring now, in the cases of beer and divide the whole crew up in half. Tell me if this is true. Yeah. Olga was one of the best. Oh, people. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. So there was a girl that worked for me in the pre production <laughs> department of Cine. Her name was Olga, and she was over the research department. Olga I mean, Einan, right? Olga Einan, Olga yeah. Ferris. Olga yeah. Einan, or who Olga later Ferris. Was Olga or, Ferris, yeah. Um, but so I want to say she was in her 60s maybe late 50s, 60s when I left. And if you could imagine this woman chugging beers and winning, supposedly she would win on many occasions. Like she could she could drink anyone under the table kind of thing. She was German, right? Well, Something Olga, like that. Olga yeah. doesn't sound uh, too uh, anything else. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Probably yeah, I, think, I think she was German or Swiss German. Yeah. Olga, like if I got it wrong, I'm sorry. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe ancestry. I think she was born in the United States, but oh, uh, okay. she might have had some uh, some German ancestry. In yeah, there. she was she was short, stout, we, well built. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. And yeah. she could and she could drink. And That's and crazy. and when did you when do you think that was in the eighties, right, Matt? Yeah. When do you think like it was there like a clean cut like those days are over was it when dave showed up or what when what because i because it's or was it when it, hubbard died you know when they started worrying about hubbard coming back and everybody wants psycho on the base to like yeah run the rpf to the ground and you know 24 7 and all like there was no more playtime. yeah I mean, before that we used to have like extended lunch periods where we would have go to the pool and we'd have the volleyball net set up and we'd be playing uh volleyball every day in the water pool volleyball. yeah water volleyball what? and then at the stalag at the star of california um, yeah. pool 
Yes, and, and the girls are, every day at lunch. I had extended lunch, and the girls were out there sunbathing. And oh my yeah. goodness, you have got to be kidding me! We, <laughs> yeah. I think I went in that pool like once or twice in fifteen we, we, years. Apparently, we just joined the Sea Org in the wrong decade. <laughs> I guess so, man. <laughs> Chugging beers, having pool parties at lunchtime. Uh, wow. I mean, the first Bosun's party, you know, when we first got there, this was Christmas, Christmas of '78. And we still had a full bar set up from the restaurant, and we had the whole wine cellar down below. And we took all this wine and, and liquor and stuff into the uh, uh, what the heck was that little building called? Um, the tavern, the tavern, yeah. Oh, everybody's dressed up like pirates and all this kind of stuff. We went crazy in that place. I mean, the floor was covered with alcohol, we were sliding in it and stuff. It would just people oh up in the gosh. rafters. I mean, wow. I had real, real parties, real bosun parties back then. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> and what was the thing How the... many people were in the base then? It was like a couple hundred people. For that Christmas party, there was maybe 25 people on the whole base. What? Wow. Oh, because that was yeah. in 78 when they just had the property. It was, it was right. We just had the property. We only got there like in the beginning of November. So we only had okay. been there for a few weeks. So there was only, wasn't that many people back then either. So no. you it, you were guys are kind of like your own little club. There was nobody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. It was just a brand new property. It's getting set up. It's like, yeah, no one, no one's, no one's watching anything that's going on. Yeah. Here. There, there was probably out 20 of people at the party. It just went crazy. <laughs> you, you were out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's so wild to think that, you know, because when we were there, it was probably, I think at the probably the height, it was probably 800 people, mm -hmm. maybe 800 I would say 1,000. It was almost, it was always almost 1,000, but I maybe, 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 yeah, maybe close to that. But then think that there was, there, there was 25 on that whole place, 25 yeah. I know. people. That's amazing. It's, like it's giant. It's, it's 520 like a small, acres, you know. Yeah, Even though some of that is the hill, you know, but but it's a big property. Technically, yeah. you could blow and just stay on the property and nobody would be able to find you then. Yeah, when somebody blew, we had to go search the property, make sure they didn't fall in a well or something, you know? That's because... true. I remember, um, do you remember a guy named Jacques Boucher, Matt? <laughs> French remember. guy, little skinny. He used to be an he used to be a, uh, an Olympic uh, gymnast. Okay, and uh, he went to sleep, and there was a room by the uh, Studio One, by the Ella Ron Hubbard Music Studio. Yeah, there was a room there called the Battery Room, and it just had yeah. backup batteries for the studio in it. Yeah. And uh, it was just an air conditioned, really cold room that had concrete floors. Jock Boucher went in there to take a nap. He we we had done like you know ten all nighters or something, and he couldn't do it anymore. He had to go lay down. He went and laid on the concrete floor in the winter, wow. and it um he went into like a, like a semi coma, oh, wow. and oh he was gosh. in there for like three days asleep on the <gasps> concrete. And when they got him, when they found him, he was unconscious, but they couldn't wake him up. Wow. And um, they put him in like a like a I think they put him in a bathtub. Like a warm. They didn't get him to the hospital. Oh no! no. I mean, what are you going to do? Of course, they didn't call How are you going to explain? We found yeah. this dude sleeping on the cold concrete for three days, but no they thought, he, he was but they thought he had blown. Oh, so there was a blow. I'm, I'm, I'm the way I the way I heard it was there was a blow drill, right? And then somebody doing something like you know you know like when you you got to get rid of something but you got nowhere to put it. This was like yeah, one yeah. of those places no. you'd be like. I gotta hide this somewhere. Where oh my god, hide it in the battery room. And somebody opened the bed. Like oh, sh you know that guy that blew. He's he's sleeping in this room here, guys. He's sleeping on the floor in here. And they they couldn't get him up. They couldn't wake him up. And I but, caught him um, in, the middle, in the middle of the winter one time one year. I went into a, a high voltage room to get some sleep. Slip slept straight on the concrete in the middle of winter. I was crying. I was shaking so bad. And there was and I'd been up for days. And I just went and hid. So I could actually sleep, and I, I swear, I mean, it was a torture, torture, torture. Nobody found me. <laughs> How did we wow. get onto this from the fun stories? I thought we were doing the fun stories. I was. That was so fun. <laughs> and when all these stories come to mind, but I didn't want to get into them because we were going to like head off into the sunset here. <laughs> oh my goodness! But so yeah, so you could literally uh, just go hide somewhere at that property, and it was so big that people might not find you for days and then you right. just show up and it's like, where were you? And be like, uh, uh, I just took a nap and be like, you took a nap. You left and said, I'm taking a nap four days ago. Where have you been? Because <laughs> <laughs> I slept for four days, huh? <laughs> yeah, Amy, Mark and I were talking the other day and I was saying, yeah, sometimes I would, um, if I'd been up for like four days 
in a row, I would be so exhausted that I would just put the in session sign on my <laughs> auditing room and sleep on the floor for two hours. But I was really worried that I would like never wake up, you know, be like, know. Rip Van Winkle, <laughs> wake up a hundred years later and you come out and it's like, what happened? <laughs> all the places that I slept. I mean, when we were on the decks all the time, I mean, we slept in the garage. Just if you found pieces of concrete just look so comfortable when you when you're up for days and days and days it doesn't matter man I, I was in a in the garage and just if you find anything soft at all you lay on it to get uh, those I'll one, I, I woke up on a public bus in their parking lot in the nighttime <laughs> some of the bus driver didn't wake me up nobody woke me up I was in the back seat I went unconscious and I was uh -huh. where was one, in Clearwater we were doing oh, like so all Oh, we're you just renos. got on the bus to take yes. a nap. Like, I yeah, got to get out of here. I would go down to Clearwater Beach and in my construction clothes and crawl on the, the, uh, the pier. boardwalk. Yeah. The pier, and I'd just sleep right there in the sand. But people keep waking me up thinking I was like, you know, some drug addict that was ODing or something. <laughs> <laughs> but many times, that's where I went to sleep, where nobody could find me. I could just at least get a few hours sleep. And then yeah, you went on the bus so long that it parked. Yes. Like it went to back. To, it was like yes. routes are done. We're parking this thing and yep. nobody woke you up. You were just in the nope. back of the bus. Yep. And then you had to hoof like, it back to the base I was from the bus I station. I knew where I was. <laughs> he's like, you he's in Tampa. You wake up like, I've been taken. <laughs> he's down by US 91. Like, where am I? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. The. So I worked in the, when I went there in 1990, I worked in the manufacturing division and used to have in, um, next to where we made all the cassettes, there was a giant warehouse next door. That's where they kept, when you made the tapes and then we'd box them up, we'd put them in, you know, put eight sets in a box and then, you know, put it on the shelf. And whenever we do these all nighters, um, sometimes people be like, well, um, this has to the master has to get made and then it has to come down and then they have to do the run and then after the runs over then I'll I'll be able to check it so I'm like well that's two hours so I'm gonna go take a nap and somebody's like where are you gonna be like I have, I'll bring a little alarm clock with me and, and in two hours I'll come back and and I would never tell them where I would be because what I would do is <laughs> on the shelves where we would put all the tapes I would make I would pull all the boxes out to the front of the shelf <laughs> And then I would just get, just take one out and push it back and then climb into the shelf where we kept the tapes and then lay down on the flat shelf and then push the box back in it. So if you were looking through the aisles, it just looked like a, a shelf full of boxes, but mm -hmm. it was just like a prop. It was just empty boxes in the front. That is and, so brilliant. And that, I think... I think that space lasted for about five years before they turned that into something else and moved the warehouse up to the third floor of that building and did a yeah. bunch of other stuff. But then I had one up there on the third floor and, and that was like a go-to. And when I became an executive many, many years later and I was doing an inspection in one of these areas, um, th this was all new. They'd already, you know, this was all now manufacturing and printers and all kinds of stuff there. But they did have a little storage shelf and when I went there, I I just saw just a just a tinge of a sleeping bag hanging out of one oh, of the shelves, and I and I just thought to myself, <laughs> still still alive, man. The spot's still alive. <laughs> Many years. Ted, it's been, lives on. <laughs> it's been thirteen years, but there's a sleeping bag behind some boxes there. These guys know where what time it is. It's good to go. It's good to go. Mark, <laughs> by the way, you can't forget to finish Jack Boucher's story. Oh, you didn't yeah. say what happened after that. Oh, he woke up after like a, <laughs> they, they put him in the, the bathtub. I think after a few hours, he was like, hey, what's going on? And like, uh, you're in a bath. You're in a warm bath, you maniac, because you're not supposed to sleep on cold concrete. So essentially what happened is the concrete just drained his entire body of temperature. He just lowered his body temp so long. So he was essentially like uh, frozen in his sleep. Like he was in an, the equivalent of an induced coma by yeah, virtue of cold Yeah, his body concrete. was just on the wow, bare possible minimum. Wow. We had someone just, like that with Paul Miller at Flag. Somebody sent him up to the roof like because he always kept falling asleep because he had that sleep apnea thing. Yeah. And nobody it wasn't diagnosed. 
And so they just thought he was like sleeping on post because he had overts and, you know, he was a bad guy and all this stuff. So somebody sent him as punishment up on one of the roofs here in Florida in the summertime to do, I don't know, some kind of manual chicken picking of uh, pebbles. Just or whatever on the roof. Yeah. He fell asleep up there. They forgot about him. And when they found him, he was completely dehydrated. He was almost dead. And he was, Wait, just, he was just cooking in the sun. All Miller, like the second highest oh, registrar. My. I mean, he would make $350,000 a week. This guy almost died up on one of the roofs of the Fort Harrison. Wow. Oh that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, no. That... Uh, we haven't seen him for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's how it was when I was in New York um, right before I, I escaped. I, I want to say it was like September, October of 2004. And um, there was a kid that worked for me doing systems for a while. His name was Trevor. And um, Trevor um, had been up for days and days and days in Spain when they were opening the Ideal Org in Spain. And the, the audiovisual systems weren't done. And they, you know, the construct, it's, it's, it's one of these things like the construction's going to finish. They're going to finish building the building about an hour before David Miscavige <laughs> announces that it's done. And, um, and Tom Cruise is going to that one too. Yeah, so there's but, extra pressure. Yeah. But yes. after they build it, then we would be able to install the AV systems. So I was yeah. like, why aren't the AV systems done? It's like, you know, they're still building uh, three of the film rooms. So I'm not sure how I could put the equipment there when there's not even a That's room. Retarded. And so they would, um, they would do these silly these silly things like that. So the, this poor kid Trevor had been staying up all night and day. So then they were going to open the Ideal Org in New York, and so then it just all started. Like after two weeks in Spain, he didn't sleep for two weeks. Sleeps all the way on the plane, then gets to New York, and it's like, okay, we're starting this off. Start staying up all night and day. He went to sleep in the auditorium in the New York Org, the one that's right near Times Square. He went to sleep in the auditorium and he just went behind the curtains like they have these big curtains along the walls to, you know, for an auditorium. And he just laid behind a curtain and went to sleep. But um, he slept for a whole day, such 24 hours. He was gone and no one could find him. And they had people out in Times Square looking. They thought he had blown. And then, you know, 24 hours after whatever, how many hours it might even have been like almost two full days that he was just missing. And uh, he just literally gets up and's like, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> and he, and, and people were like, dude, where were you? He's like, I just went to take a nap. <laughs> yeah, for two days. So yeah, people, when Sea Org members go, when Sea Org members f uh, find a place to sleep where they're not getting woken up, they're gonna sleep for a while. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, and people in the comments are like, wow. And these are the fun stories. Really? Yeah, these are the yeah. fun. You know, yeah, these are the fun stories. Folks. Oh, getting, you don't want to hear the bad stories. I know. I, it's all relative. It's all getting relative. 30 hours of sleep is the most fun you're going to have in the season. It's what we call relatively fun. <laughs> I got to tell one last sleep one. Me and Bill Dendo, we get sent to Portland for the Portland Crusade. We get sent by airplane to get things organized there before the RPF arrives by bus from, from Los Angeles. And we've been up for a couple of days and we're exhausted. And somebody gave us a car to use and uh, a room at some hotel that had like apartment complex or hotel complex that had like two stories. And as we're getting out of the car, Bill knew which room it was and he took off. We don't even, like, I don't even know what name it's under. And I'm looking around, <laughs> it's the middle of the night and I, I don't know where he is, I'm looking around. And I'm exhausted, so pretty soon I'm like, forget it, I gotta get to sleep. So I went into a mate's closet on the second floor. I pulled some <laughs> towels down and I laid on the floor amongst the carts. As the sun started to come up, this little Asian lady comes in, the maid. She sees me sleep on the floor, she starts screaming bloody murder. I'm like, <laughs> I gotta get out of there before you know this thing flaps, you know. <laughs> Scientologists found sleep in the maid's closet. <laughs> and of course, there's no cell phones. There's that. No, this is like there's 1984 like or no. something, right? No. Was that was that when it was? That was in '84, right? Portland yeah. Crusade '84. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. Or uh, yeah, '84, '85. Yeah, I was gonna so, say '84. No, it was '84. It was '84. So okay. I have to ask: Did you have to confess that in a sec check? No, I got away with this, so it was good. 
Oh, that's I wasn't amazing. Bring that up. I would have got sent home. I probably would have got sent out of the sea. Oh, I know. I, I know. I know. I know. It's it's crazy. Oh my gosh, that's just insane. And and for what? For sleeping? That's yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's the trouble that I got into when we were talking about that in another video, Claire, where I had gotten in trouble in L.A. Yeah. And then you were just about to move. That is actually what I got in trouble for was sleeping in my office. Yeah. Like at late at night, I'd be like, uh, you know, I haven't been home in four days or four yeah. months or whatever it is. I'm going to take know. a cat nap in the back of my office from like 11 to three. Yeah. And uh, it was like, yeah, well, everybody was else up was when everybody else was up working and you were taking a cat nap in your office. <laughs> yeah, they make us like you're a real from slacker. From 1 yeah. to like 3 a.m. in your you. life. <laughs> it's just like, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I took a nap for two hours. Thanks. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they, yeah. they did that to Mike so many times, Mike Rinder. Oh, my oh, they, goodness. Dave would do a whole photo shoot when we'd be, we'd be in meetings and we'd be talking and then it would be like, okay, everybody go do your stuff. And then, you know, three, four hours later, we had a meet. The meeting was at midnight. So now it's like three, four a.m. And uh, and Mike would be working on a script at a desk and he'd just be. <laughs> and uh, and we, we would walk through and you'd see you'd be like, oh, boy. And uh, you'd see Jeff Baker, LRH's uh, pictures. photographer, shooting pictures of Mike Rinder sleeping. And then, of course, the next day we're at the meeting and Dave. Miscavige comes in and he's like, oh, you guys want to know what happened last night? Okay. And then he just goes, <laughs> and he throw like a hundred prints of Mike, different poses and angles and everything Mike of Mike sleeping at his desk at four o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning and just be like, oh, this again. It was all, it was just nonstop. It was just, yeah. it, I think. Of course, Miscavige is getting good night's sleep all the time and waking up, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Oh yeah. yeah, no, he would he he'd bu he'd bug out at like three or four, and we wouldn't see him until one or two in the afternoon. So you're just yeah. like, oh, I get it. Yeah, we we went home, shit showered and changed. He came right back <laughs> at like seven eight. Like you would literally be like, hey, we got to go because we got to get there and back before eight thirty at muster. So it'd be like yeah. at seven o'clock. You'd be like, we got to go. We got to go. Go take a shower change your uniform come back in and be standing there at muster and then two o'clock dave will we'll have a meeting and dave will just roll in you know all, all rested and primped and prepped and you're just like oh so yeah slept. and and to be clear the the photos that um miscavige had of mike render sleeping it's not because of random instances of him just happening to walk in and take a picture. He had somebody from Religious Technology Center watching Mike 24 seven. Yeah. Um, staying with him the entire time. So every time, you know, let's say he dozed off at four o'clock in the morning, click, got a picture. Yeah. Six. 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 Is that uh, is that uh, is that uh, grapefruit or That's is that uh, pineapple? Which That's one have we got? There? You mango. Mango. Oh my goodness. That's mango. This is mango. Where, where's the uh, where's uh, where's uh, pomegranate? Is that? <laughs> Stop it, Mark. <laughs> pomegranate. Get pomegranate on the phone. It was oh my gosh, he's a little puppy. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was, oh. A, it was a, a oh. SPTV contributor that at, that said I should name the puppy Kiwi. And oh, really? Was, yes. Oh, okay. look at them. They're so sweet. Oh, yeah. Oh, Especially my goodness. Side by side. They just play all day long. They do? Uh, so like they're how, So yeah. they're good buddies. Oh, big time. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Buddies. I love so how cute. Mango tries to eat Kiwi's face. That's what our German yeah. Shepherd does to our dog all the time. Yeah. Like just puts their, her entire mouth over his face. Yeah. You're like, dude, stop it. And, and the dog she's doing that to is bigger than she is. So you're like, yeah. he doesn't like that. You might find out the hard way. <laughs> all righty, that was fun. <laughs> okay, doggy puppy break. Oh, we should do another giveaway, right? Oh, do we boy. do one in yeah, an hour? Yeah, let's oh, get no, we do one now. Yeah. yeah, we'll do one now. Do yeah. we want to do Blum for Good? Yes. I, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, so, everyone, hey. this, oh, is I see. For, this is for the book Blown for Good. Look and at so, you. either 
Claire or uh, Mark will pick it. Go ahead. Mark, Mark you I've, do it because the I've link I'm never, on, I, ca I can't pick a, I can't. I've never even it. shown my book on our channel. <laughs> really? I just realized I've never shown my book on my channel. You're never right. once. Oh, never once. This is the see, first time so I've awesome been in a video where my book has uh, been shown. Um, okay. So if you're on your Apple TV or your Kindle or whatever and you get you don't have to comment, get to your phone and oh, um sorry. Can I can I take it back? Can I pick the winner? I'll just <laughs> call out the name. Okay. Okay. Sorry, honey. <laughs> Literally, okay. we just got done. You just got done telling us you, how you couldn't pick it. Well, and I know. You're back to it. <laughs> I know, but then I remembered. Oh, I can say the name. That's what I have to I, deal with, folks. You think it's just I like in my head? <laughs> it's not in my head. It's not in my head. <laughs> I'm not crazy. This is what happened. Okay, five, four. I just didn't want you to have all the fun. Oh five, my goodness! Four, three, two, one, and I pick. Amber Vaness. Okay, what's the time? Uh, I don't know how to see that. Sorry. It's right next to the name. Amber. Okay. Oh, see, this is where we're going to get it. It's <laughs> Amber, if you... Amber, just... Amber, <laughs> shoot, me a, shoot me an email. Claire at blownforgood.com. Goldie, if you're there, we love you. Please, please ping... Uh, please make sure Amber saw this since I wasn't able to post up her name on the screen. But there you go. Yeah, there you yes. go. Uh, Claire at blownforgood.com. Yes. And um, yeah, this is uh, people. People love these uh, giveaways. I tell you. Um, yes. I think there's a lot of people just watching in case we might give them a book or something. You know, I, that's all oh, we, we want. We, we might give a dog away pretty soon here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can aim. Hey, now, you know, the thing is, you know how I. It's the community that helped me convince Matt that I needed a second dog, right? In order yeah. to give. Yes, Mango, I remember. Uh, a playmate. Okay. So now he's saying, you know, we're out to dinner with his two sisters because um, for his birthday. And his one of his sisters has one dog. And he's like, oh, you you got to have two dogs. <laughs> you, you can't just have one dog. I'm like, now he's a complete campaigner for that. <laughs> well, it does help. It does help when they can entertain each other. Yeah, totally. Because, yeah. I mean, unless you like w our dogs are kind of lucky because Claire is at the house a lot of the time. And yeah. there's kids around and there's always somebody around. But if we're not here for a few hours, they they're completely content to you know yeah. just mess around and do whatever they do. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. They're right under my feet right now, wrestling. wrestling. Nice. Um, I want to I want I want to show this, which is to order Mark's book. Visit blownforgood.com. That's for anyone who um, you didn't win the book. Sorry about that right now, but you, it, the book is available and you can get it at blownforgood.com. And then for my book, you can go to my website, which is scoby-publishing.com. Or some people correct me, it should be scoby-publishing.com. Uh, hyphen, hyphen. Publishing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can get my book there. But I will awesome. do a giveaway at the end of tonight as well. Oh, you're going to give one of your books away? Yes, I am. Whoa. Yeah, that's what we do every fancy. week. Oh, yes, nice. Awesome. So, so if you didn't win tonight and you would like another chance, then tune in next Wednesday for more giveaways. Same time, same place. <laughs> yes. Same, time. <laughs> same SPTV channel, same SPTV time. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, um, okay, so now we are talking about fun times. Oh, yeah. Yes. We've got some really fun yeah. ones. People were, were expressing oh, their, the, their uh, this one. their shock at what we well, considered fun. <laughs> yeah, they're like well, the the drinking was fun. I don't yeah. think um I just know. never got to drink. So I'm yeah. shocked that that even happened at the the base. <laughs> yeah. We used to have yeah. wild parties back in the day, you know? Like the Boston parties at Flag and stuff were like real parties with liquor and stuff and then Tell too many me what the Boston party is a, is a Christmas it's a it was it's a Christmas party and it's called a bosun's party and people would dress up as pirates. Didn't for you, it. didn't we didn't it used to also be called the beer and cheese party? Or that was that a Christmas? separate. Like oh, that's there was a, a beer separate and cheese one? party oh. and yeah. a bosun's party. Oh, we yeah. never had a bosun's party if anything at when during our years from 90 to 2005 it was a beer and cheese party if yeah. we had anything. And but 
I, but but beer, that's a beer. Beer and <laughs> cheese. <laughs> just hold the beer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember it, we had O'Doul's one year, and I was like, oh, come on. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> I, but, this is but, ridiculous. But, honey, didn't you, in December 1991, at the beer and cheese party, there was a costume party, and you oh. dressed up in full drag? That's oh, true. I dressed <laughs> up, and I think I, I think I have a picture of it somewhere. You do. Oh, that would be you do. Classy. I do. It's me. I have a really long, curly blonde wig on. Yeah. I have a black and white patterned dress. I have lipstick. I have makeup. Don't, don't let Osa get a hold of that. It's going to be on the cover. Um, something. Well, no, the, no, the way no, no. that I heard it though, because I wasn't there, because I, I was visiting my family for three days, one yeah. of the times. But the way I heard it is David Miscavige did a double take and was like, who's that? That's right. He really did. He was like, who's that? And I was like, wouldn't you like to know? And um, I had these big sunglasses on. Um, and my face was literally, I had, I have I had, I, I was in the cine division for many yeah. years. So, but the makeup girls will just make you up like, hey, can you help me? And they, they made you up. Um, and I was wearing high heel, the whole thing. The whole yeah, it yeah. was like it was a Halloween it was like a it was a Christmas party but it was a costume everybody had to come mm -hmm. in a costume and if you and there was going to be a contest to see who if anybody could guess who it was so wow. I was playing foosball with the Invisible Man which was Darius Wilhair and he was completely wrapped from head to toe in ace bandages so. There was no way you could tell who it was unless you knew him. And he had sunglasses on and I had sunglasses on. We were playing foosball and David Miscavige walked up and said, who is it? And um, Darius was like, mm. he made some kind of noise. And then he goes, <laughs> and then as soon as he did it, Dave goes, oh, hey, Darius. And then he oh, goes, great. okay, who, who's that? And I, and that's when I said, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> and then uh he was like, oh, is that how it's going to be? And I was like, oh, shit. I want to get some. <laughs> and uh, he couldn't figure it out. He didn't know who it was. And then finally, oh, and then I took off my glasses. And then he goes, oh, it's the new guy or, you know, something like that. It's it's Headley. And right. um, but um, yeah, the, and I, I think I. I think I even blew him a kiss, too. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. Like, when, when did you like that, to know? That that's totally. I think that's the what put, that's, that was the, oh, maybe too much. Uh, because I, <laughs> what did you like to know? <laughs> like that. And somebody, people were like looking at me like, oh, this, this boy's crazy. <laughs> what um, was that? You don't know him yet, right? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I was, a, I was, a, I got there in, you know, in 1990. So I was kind of relatively like the new, yeah. you know, this guy has no clue this place <laughs> is not the right place for him. Um, uh. I mean, yeah, we were that, so that was LRH's, we we're working on LRH's uh, five car garage up there on a the hill and it was Christmas at day in at the end phase. And because it was Christmas and everything, I had a bottle of liquor and I, I gave it to the guys to, to uh, drink and they're, they're working up on the, you know, the attic and stuff and rafters. Yeah, up in the rafters. One of them fell through the sheetrock. They got so drunk, they fell through the freaking sheetrock. So I had to like, okay, give me back the bottle. You know, <laughs> yeah, you're like, enough, enough of that for you guys. <laughs> Oh, great. oh that's... when you're working on an LRH space and you fall through the ceiling. Oh yeah, the RPF is is too drunk and falls through the through the <laughs> ceiling. Um, yeah, that's uh... not a uh, that's not a that's not a red flag. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of we had we did have another party. Um, I think it might have been the next year where they had this thing like we were going to have beers from different countries and um like there was going to be whatever whatever beers imported beers we could get we would get as many countries and it, and i think ken hoden that was the he was the port captain at the time in the early 1990s and um and he was telling us um we're going to try to get 50 countries worth of beers here and i had never really um drank before i mean even in that time i think i was I think I was 20 in um, in 93. Was I 20? Yeah, I was 20. So I wasn't even of legal age yet. But in there, no one's carding anybody. You know, I don't even think, I don't even ever remember that being a thing. Like, it was just like, yeah, give me a beer. You know, but um, I think I got to like 12 countries. 
So I would t- each t- it w- that's how you you the the goal was to go to many as many countries as you can. So <laughs> I think I was on. I think when I got to Australia and I got a Foster's kegger, I was like, I'm down for the count. And I am a. Um, there's photographic evidence that I am a sleepy drunk. When um, when, I, yeah. when I when I drink too much, you just need to put me somewhere uh, off to the side for a while. And, Remember um, Saturday, all hands renos. We used to have truckloads. There would be beer, beer runs mm-hmm. every Saturday during all hands renos. That you would you drink your, during building the buildings. Totally, you. They would somebody would come around and take your order, what you wanted. You give you know some money, get me a six pack of this and. And people would go off and come back with a truckload of beer and then pass it out based on who paid for the Oh, beer. my That was every Saturday. Goodness. Would, you'd be drunk and drink and uh, doing your renos. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Somebody says in the co- comments, uh, where is it? Right here. Oh, no. Uh, I have some Polish beer in my kitchen. Oh, Polish. 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 Um, no, this was the one I was looking for. You passed out in the street on your birthday, Mark. Yeah, I know that. That's what I'm referencing. <laughs> um, anyway, but I, I, um, I had to get something, and I don't remember what. Like somebody said, "Oh, we need this," and I was like, "Oh, I have it." Like, oh, they wanted to play some kind of. Uh, de- oh, somebody was saying, "Oh, we should play some Depeche Mode." It was it's like a big party in MCI. And um, I was like, oh, my CDs are at my house. And they're like, go get them. And so I, wherever I went to go to get them, I had to drive on the golf course because this must have been a little bit later because Claire was already in RTC at this time. I um, remember this. And um, so I said, oh, I got to go to the house real quick. Well, somebody's like, well, you can't drive, dude. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to go on the roads. I'll go through the back of the property and then I'll just go along the golf course. And I'll just because my my the back of our house was face face to the backyard yeah. was the golf course right there. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I'll just drive my motorcycle because I'm plus just bullets beyond. I've been to 12 countries halfway through Australia <laughs> and <laughs> I need to go get my CDs. Perfect. Sounds like a perfect uh, scenario. And he, so I somehow I get to the, um, the house without any problems whatsoever. I get the CDs and then I'm on the way back and I'm on my 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 TW2 uh, TW uh, Yamaha, Yamaha TW200 TW and I'm driving around the golf course oh and it was pitch black so I couldn't see anything and um, I hit a sand trap I just went poof and the bike just went stud I was probably going 30 miles an hour just complete stop and um and the and the boys the boys got smashed. That's, all, that's what I'm telling you. Okay, I went so far forward on that tank, just like just. Whoop. And uh, let, let, let's just say it's a miracle we have any children. Oh my goodness! I so I I get back on the bike. The bike just and I'm in the sand, so I just go and then I just go. Oh, just fall, just fall over in the sand and the tra- in the sand trap, and then it takes me about 15 minutes to be like. I don't know if I should even go back at this. I might just pop, <laughs> just just walk it, just leave my bike in the middle of this golf course in the sand trap. Just go back to my house. I'm just calling it. So I finally, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it through. Like, no, no. If they open in the morning, because it was open to the public. If they open to the in the morning, and my motorcycle's in the middle of the course, they're gonna know I drove on the course. You're not supposed to drive anything. On that they're course. gonna start a, a a massive police investigation for the dead body or the, you know, who knows what. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh. Anyway, so I get back on the bike. I go back, I bring the CDs. Like, I get there like an hour late. Like, they're like, dude, the party's over, dude. Where, where'd you go? Um, and then um, we, we, we finished the party, whatever. We come home and I take my pants off. And I tell you, it literally looked like somebody poured black paint from my knees all the way oh. to my waist. It was just, oh. just all black everything just black i had i think it took like three weeks for the, those bruises to go away and i was walking like a cowboy for like a week. <laughs> oh, i'm sure just oh, like no. <laughs> and That's and nasty. you know what sweetie over here ginger ginger didn't ride a kr on me that time even though i <laughs> yeah. technically had an accident she didn't ride a kr I well, would yeah, learn. because you. Just I would learn later yourself. that that was my freebie. You didn't nearly kill yourself. I only had your best interests at heart. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. Here now. we go. Here, Here we go. go. <laughs> we may as well talk about the rings too while we're. Oh well, yeah, she sent the rings back to me in an envelope. Just wanted to make put that out there. 
Uh, I've got my motorcycle yeah. like locked up. My security. Same old, same yeah. old over here at the Headley household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we're coming back from Portland, we have a, a hired big bus with the RPF in it. We fill the front seats up to the ceiling with cases of beer. Uh, the, we had a all of Matt's stories have beer in them. You notice that? Every single totally story is yeah. beer. Yeah. And, and you know what? When we go, when we do stuff, never drinks beer. <laughs> right. Matt, he likes beer. He likes beer. When? But I only have a drink. I, I, I maybe he, have one couple of beers a year or something. He's yeah, doing. he doesn't ever yeah. drink. He's a Mr. He's you know, tea or water or something or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going. Keep going. So you're on the bus. You're in. Uh... We have all the beer piled up to the ceiling in the front seats of this bus. We have a ghetto blaster. And all the way back, not all the way back to L.A. because we went to sleep after a while, but we were dancing, taking turns, dancing up and down the, the aisle of the bus and, and drinking and oh, wow. just having a great old time. But this was in the Portland thing again, right? Yeah. Yeah. So to be fair, just so everybody knows, Matt is not just drinking full time. He was in the RPF and you got guys got to take a break to go do a whole like basically a vacation tour of portland for several weeks how long did that thing last it was weeks right was, yeah i was probably weeks. there for uh, yeah probably at least three. at least three weeks if three not weeks. longer because we yeah. stayed till the very end so well, even though yeah, there was lots of work to do went. when yeah. it was a full-time party because you weren't you weren't getting sec checked or whatever else when you get on the rpf and you weren't having to clean dumpsters or f yeah, clean right. the galley or build a building or you're basically no. just building stages and hanging out with chick korea and stanley clark and you know Edgar winter yeah, we Edgar winter right next to the hebers in this like four or five star hotel yeah we had like tv yeah it was like we had a tv in a bathroom and a big marble it, uh, tub and it was like we had like a four or five star hotel room and we would get in there we had been sleeping on the floor for like over a year we get in there and then dude runs and he jumps onto one of the beds and he goes check out this mattress right and i laid <laughs> on the carpet and i said no check out this carpet <laughs> <laughs> and it's like this is way better than my concrete bed at home <laughs> well, That's he, well he was because they were doing PR, he got to live in the hotel, but I went to Portland too, because I was in the RPF and we were sleeping on floors. And, um, but it was still fun. I wrote it down as one of the things that was really fun. Um, I was with Martin Reed, Mr. Electric, electrical, because I was um, on the RPF. I was responsible for all electrical and electronics logistics for the massive studios and everything. So I was like a very key admin, uh, logistics person. And um, so, there we were buying miles of cable and because we were having concerts in all kinds of different locations so we were just running cables and running cables and i was having to buy things left right and center there we all had walkie talkies and stuff but we weren't getting very much sleep but it was really fun it was actually a fun time yeah wow well, got off the property of, <laughs> yeah speaking of martin reed didn't he punch you in the face once honey <laughs> um he never actually was able to get to me because i had bodyguards oh um but martin reed i want to tell a portland story you have to remind me to tell the portland portland okay. story but and i will tell, tell a, a martin reed attack story too yeah i'll tell you the oh, martin okay. reed uh, attempted uh, homicide uh, story first <laughs> Um, so Martin was. Reed was married to a girl named Jody. Dana Reed Dana. for a oh, while. Dana. Yes, Dana Houston, Dana Reed. Um, oh. And she was um, historically, whenever we'd have um, like events, public events where people would come in from the city to we put on some sort of mixer or Lions Club or whatever they would have. And um, and. <laughs> she would be the person that would be like the chief waitress or the chief server. And then she would recruit all these other girls to be waitresses. And then they would, um, they would be the waitresses for this event. And the, every time one of these events would happen, a list would get printed out and say, this is the list of all the people's assignments for the event. And my assignment for the entire time I worked at Golden Era Productions or any place any post i was the one who ran the setups right i would get all the chairs moved and all the tables broken down and we'd set the whole place up and do a whole thing 
anytime there was any event in MCI, I was the one who would run it. Even if I was busted the day before and David Miscavige just did a briefing on how I was the scumbag of the world, at the end of that briefing, I would run. I would be like, okay, set it up. Yeah, and I would yeah get exactly. Second. I was just going to say that like any ba- any person who ever worked at the Int base that is listening to this can hear in their mind Mark going, set it up. <laughs> anyway, and that was the best when David Miscavige spent an hour berating me about how I was the scum of the earth. When that briefing was all over, it was like, is he going to do it? And I was like, set it up. And people started <laughs> laughing like, of course, he's the, he doesn't even it doesn't even face him. He's the scum of the earth. David Miscavige just told everybody he's an asshole for an hour straight. And he's like, yeah, well, st- you guys still got to set this thing up and I still got to make you do it. Um <laughs> Anyway, the list came out, and instead of listing listed as the setup IC, I was in the waitresses. Okay, somebody cut and pasted, and they put me in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm on. It's on Saturday. The event Saturday night. It's Saturday. It's noon, or twelve thirty, one o'clock. I'm mixing concrete in the middle of the sun, and Dana Houston comes up to me and says. Just want to confirm that you're uh, going to be ready for waitressing <laughs> at seven o'clock tonight. Did you bring in your Did you bring in your civvies? And I'm just like, what? And she's like, you're listed as a waitress for tonight. I'm like, I'm looking around like, you know what I do? I set up MCI, honey. I'm not the, uh, I'm not a waitress. And she pulls out the list and she's like, it's right here under the waitress. And I'm like, I'm like seriously, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to be a waitress, okay? You're uh, s- somebody somebody up at HQ there messed up when they made the list, okay? I'm not uh, that's not my thing. Anyway, she was she was like, "It's here. I'm in charge. You're under me." And I'm just like, "Okay, whatever." And so, I'm mixing concrete this whole time. I'm like taking sand and putting it in the mixer and getting the lime and I'm doing the whole thing and she gets in my face and as I move she gets bumped and she falls into the sand <laughs> so just like you know she's just she's standing in the sand pile she yeah. gets bumped and then she just sits down anyway. you know she she maybe fell a foot she sat down in a pile of sand and yeah. then she got up and she goes you're in trouble mister and then um <laughs> She's like, you pushed me in the sand. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, go. Anyway. She was a bulldoggy kind of yeah. person. Somebody she in was. the comments is like, it's server, Mark. Server. No. It no, said, said wait- waitress. waitress. Okay. That's that's part of this story. Okay. Yeah. The list said waitresses. Mark Headley. Okay. Anyway. So, so. So I think nothing of it. I'm like, obviously, I'm going to mix some concrete. And when this is done, I'm going to go and I'm not going to do any of that. So that's it. <clears throat> anyway, somebody comes up to me about an hour later while I'm mixing concrete. We're building like a um, we're building a stone veneer wall by the dentist office. You know um, mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. used to be the hor- across from the Horwich house, that little. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're building a, a stone veneer brick wall, uh, like a, a block wall there, and then we're going to stone veneer it. And um, and somebody comes up and he goes, Mark, you got to hide. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what's going on? Like, Martin Reed is coming to kill you. And I'm like, Martin? He's like, yeah, he heard you punched his wife out and he's coming. And I was like, what? I was like, what are you talking about? And then as they're explaining this to me, um, a bunch of people are running towards me and one of them is um, Gerald Duncan, who's uh, famously not my in my camp. And this other um, MAA, his name was Salvatore Mayo. He was kind of like a, an MAA. A short a, little guy. Sl- an, an, an MAA is an ethics officer, the person who's responsible. Master for, at arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah master, master at, at arms. Keeping yeah. discipline in. <laughs> so you've got Gerald Duncan, who's the director of inspections and reports. And he's like mm-hmm. the head of the police of the property. And yeah. then he has one of his police officers. And, um, and they come and they're like, what happened? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And like, supposedly Martin Reed is planning to kill you. And uh, I'm just like, yeah, I don't know why. He's like, did you beat up Dana? Or so? I said, no, she's trying to get me to be a waitress. And I told her to F off. And she sat in the sand and then she walked away. I was like, I don't want to. I'm mixing. I'm building a wall here. I don't know anything about any of this. 
Anyway, and so right as I'm telling him this, we see Martin Reed running a thousand miles an hour. Oh my toward, God, like, this guy. Like he's yeah. like been drugged and he's yeah, been yeah. programmed. That's how he is. And, yeah, and, and, he is. They're, and he's not slowing down at all. He's just coming and coming and coming and coming. <laughs> and Salvatore Mayo and, and, and Gerald. He, and he was like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he was. Uh, he was on a mission. He was on a. Anybody in the Sea that would actually kill somebody for bumping their wife would be. It would be. Oh, him. yeah. And so yeah. he came and he barreled into them and they're rolling all over the ground and people are grabbing him. It took like four guys to carry him the whole time, come kicking and screaming. I will kill you. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa. And I'm just mixing concrete. I'm just like, this is wild, man. Anyway, um, and yeah, so then. Waitress outfit, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> that was the last thing. So then at, we, we all had to go get, after you do renos, you go home, you get, sh uh, sh you know, shit shower change. You change into your civvies, your civilian clothes, and then you come in. Well, that event had to get set up. I set up the event. And then they're like, okay, you need to go back to your post, but Salvatore and Gerald have to come with you. <laughs> and for two days, Salvatore just sat behind my desk in a chair um, and just in case Martin came over. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is so crazy. And yeah. in the end, I think Martin was the one that they were like, dude, you gotta take it easy, <laughs> you know? And right. uh, and they were like, Mark, what 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 what's going on? I'm just like, I ain't being a waitress. I mean, that's just not gonna happen. Yeah, that's a ton. I didn't mean to cause I, all this I, trouble. I was but. a waitress at that same event, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Martin Reed. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh yeah, I worked with him in the same office for like a year. I was his logistics person. So if anything went wrong, he <gasps> he just had the right. most. Mm -hmm, he just yeah. had the most explosive. Yeah, um, his temper went. It started at one, then seven thousand. Then yeah. twenty five thousand, and that, that's exactly right. That was yeah. the scale. So, like, even if he kind of started to lose it, if you weren't mm -hmm. like, oh, whoa, 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 if you were like, no. what's wrong with, you? then it would go like, no, no, no. oh yeah, it would just, it was out. It I was, had to learn. I had oh, to learn. Yeah. I mean, he he kicked holes through doors and walls, oh, yeah. and he, he threw <laughs> things at me, and he all kinds of different things, you know. Well, that was the other crazy thing is that I don't know actually like the the truth behind this and martin and dana were got divorced and went their separate ways but they were there was like a lot of um uh explosive conversations that would happen between them like mm -hmm. to the point where it would be like they would have to be separated and yeah. it was always like this drama it was like, similar to him yeah because it was just like she would she would go crazy and he'd go and then the two of them together it was just like oh my goodness yeah. but um Okay, let me tell you my Portland story because I yeah. was at Portland. But yeah, when when Portland happened, I was only eleven years old. Okay. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and we went. We were told um, my dad was in a band, and the band Thad Korea was the drummer of that band. Mm -hmm. So um, it was him and the, uh, this other guy named Steve and another guy named Greg. And it was like, hey, you guys have to come and be one of the bands that are going to play and uh, up in the Portland Crusade. And you could, we'll, we'll pay for everything. We'll get you there. We'll put you in a hotel. We'll do all that. Um, but you got to, you know, you got to be like the backup band for Edgar Winter or Chick Career or whatever. You guys are just going to be jamming up there as much as we can have you do it. And um, so my dad was like, well, I can't leave my son here in Hollywood and they were like, oh, he can come. We'll, we'll put him to work. We'll do a job or we'll have him do something. And it's like, Wah. and then they were like, trust me, we'll, he'll be with somebody the whole time when we're there. And uh, I was like, okay, okay. And they're like, do you want to go? And I was like, sounds like fun. So we go up on one of those buses. We get up there. And then as soon as we get there, I don't see my dad. Like, he's like, okay, you're going to go do this. And they say, okay, what? And I'm in the, um, the, I think it was a, there was a CC Portland. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where we were based out of. Yeah, so there's a Celebrity mm -hmm. Center in Portland. And they said, you're going to go over to Celebrity Center Portland and they have a perfect job for you. And so I was like, okay, fine. So I go, they tell, I go where they tell me, I'm 11 years old. I'm just walking around downtown Portland um, <laughs> oh at 11. 
They tell me the address, and I'm gonna. There's no phones. There's no nothing. I have no way to get a hold of my father. He has no way to get a hold of me. Oh my god! And um, I find this place, and the only reason I found it is because I saw somebody like wearing a some kind of sign, uh, C organization uniform or something, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh. And then I fo- I just followed that person, <laughs> and they went to the same address. So I was oh like, okay, god. I'm good. Um, and then so I get to the address, and they say, okay, you're gonna be the celebrity communicator. Oh, and I'm kind of like, okay. And they're like, because there's nothing really else that I can do except for like work a, a radio, a walkie radio. talkie. Uh-huh. So they said, you're going to sit in this town car with this driver. They just hired a town car with a driver. Mm-hmm. And they and uh, they said, you're going to sit in the front seat and we're going to tell you, okay, go pick this person up from this place. And then you're going to tell the driver and then you're going to go and you're just going to sit with him in the car. And that's it. Yeah. And you're going to have all these snacks and drinks and a cooler. And so whoever you pick up, you're going to offer those to the person. And like, would you like something? I'm just like, oh, this is even at 11. I knew like this seems pretty hokey to me. Like you got on a, you got a, just a random driver, dude. You got an 11 year old kid <laughs> wearing the same outfit for weeks. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't like I brought a suitcase. I had like a backpack with like maybe something, a sock and an underwear in there. And, uh, and that's it. That's I, I'm here for, I, we're going to be here. What? Three days. Oh no. We were there for three weeks. Anyway, I'm sitting in the front of this town car. We're picking up John Travolta. We're picking up Chick Corea. We're picking them up from here, taking them there, doing all this. And I'm just in the front seat <laughs> offering people Cokes and co- and uh, crackers and shit. You know, like, would you like would you like a beverage, sir? <laughs> but um, I, that's literally what I did for probably two of the weeks we were there because wow. there was only they didn't the celebrity thing that that train didn't last the whole time it was like yeah i think at the very beginning there was a bunch and at the very that big big concert that we did in that park yeah, yeah. Grand there finale, was that Edgar, Winner, and everybody. yeah when that was to, and al Jarreau called on the phone and yeah, yeah. did yeah. the yeah. and no the racetrack we yeah, did al Jarreau, it, no al Jarreau, was al Jarreau there i think al Jarreau, no. I think it was on the phone. Oh no, Stevie Wonder called, oh, Stevie Wonder. Right. Yeah. and he Stevie played. Um, um, I just called to say I love you. He played it on the phone. That's yeah, right. yeah. While they were in the middle of the concert, and yeah. that's yeah. actually where I got the idea to play a Depeche Mode song on the phone was from Stevie Wonder. But oh, okay. um, <laughs> anyway, Stevie Wonder <laughs> called in when Chick and whoever were doing something, and um, but yeah, um, the there was a week in there though, like where I think there was even a time where. There were, all the celebrity stuff had died down. It was like, okay, you're gonna go help, you know, get, give out snacks near the near the stage or something. And I loved it because I was just like full time snacking, you know. <laughs> so I was like, this is Licking the best. Somebody, somebody asked out. if you licked any of those crackers. I oh no! <laughs> I, I, but I drank I drank a soda or fu- or seven hundred during that uh, that three week period because our parents, my parents, weren't loaded. So it wasn't like I had access to unlimited soda and snacks. So it was like, uh, you know, it was one of those don't eat all of your profit kind of uh, businesses. <laughs> but, but I wasn't paying for anything. So I was like, whatever. Um, nor but, nor um, were you being paid, right? Yeah. And I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't getting paid for this. No. Um, but I went, I was, remember, I was giving out snacks. I was giving out snacks and it started getting later and later. And then I got tired. And, um, and when I get tired, I find a place to get get uh her horizontal there and uh, i just went right under the stage they were playing on the stage i just went <laughs> under the stage and went to sleep and when i woke up the next day there was nobody there the stage wow. the stage was gone wow so you're just like, in the field i was in the middle of the park in the grass oh my god asleep oh my god and there was nothing there and i thought i thought they broke the stage down around me like like that was huge too yeah i I was like how is that even possible like nobody thought like maybe wake him up like (laughs) it just it was i literally i went to there was people watching a concert and i went to sleep under a stage and the next day when i woke up everything was gone and i thought to myself well thanks a lot guys and that park was not near the other park that we were set up No. No, no 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 And so I was like, I, and this is the one right on the river, How the that big park that? right on the, the bank of the river. And, um, and I think it took me like a half an hour 
to figure out where I was and how to get back to that other place because I was, wow. again, I was 11 and I was being wow. driven around in the car the most of the time. So I wasn't paying it. You know, when you're a kid, you're not paying no. attention yeah. to like <laughs> what street's this and what street's this. Yeah. No. You're just going for a ride. And especially, anyway. you, it's not like you lived there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And also, hadn't seen my dad for maybe a week or so. Oh my goodness. And every once in a while, I think we'd meet up or something. And, you know, I don't actually remember where I slept any time that I was there except for the time that I fell asleep um, under the stage. I don't ever remember. Did we camp in the parks when we were there? A lot of people slept in the CC on the floors. They, so, they laid them out like sardines. Like, yeah. would be head to head in a road, side by yeah. side, and then there'd be enough room, feet to feet, to walk through, and then sardines again on the whole length of the, 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 the auditorium there. I think a lot of the kids, I think a lot of us kids slept on the buses. I think we would find the buses, and that's where we would sleep because they were, you know, com semi comfortable. And we knew if they were going to pick a bunch of people up and take them somewhere, we'd get there because we're asleep on the bus. And there was also <laughs> drinks and stuff on the bus, drinks and snacks on the bus. I, I just, just like Mike's stories are all like beer. Mine are just drink and sleep related, <laughs> drink and <laughs> drink and snack related. Okay? <laughs> oh man, what was the one that you wanted to say that? Because uh, we were talking about Chick Corea, like the difference between. Oh yeah, in the early days, you know, we'd have these wild parties with all the drinking and stuff like that, and. uh There'd always be a whole bunch of people get RPF the next day because of out 2D and, you know, mm -hmm. having sex with, having sex with somebody they weren't married to. You know, it was you, you guaranteed you're going to add like 10 people to the RPF after every party. <laughs> so then they, they got wise to that and they uh, they started having this show up. No, no alcohol. It's like white tablecloths and candles, candles and flowers and Chick Corea is up there playing the, the, the piano the whole time. And we're like, uh, this ain't a party, man. <laughs> Oh they just try goodness. to make it so chill so nobody could get in trouble. Yeah. So when when we first got out and I made my first kind of home cooked meal, yeah, because I didn't know how to cook or whatever, I set the table really nice. I lit a candle and everything like that. And I had this really nice setup, and he comes and sits down and blows out the candle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh... you know, like the flickering in front of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like he's like happy birthday to me. <laughs> that's funny yeah oh, no. when we when we first left and i think that was i don't was that actually did it stay on the aftermath show when that thing where it was like yeah we we had yeah. been married when we left we had been married for t 13, 13 years, years. we've yeah. been married for 13 years and mm -hmm. um and we were we got to this place and we were we we you know like oh my gosh and we had it was what, what was that when we had the condo or had, we were still living with my dad we were still living with your dad and his wife at the time yeah and um and so it was just so surreal to be like now after having lived in this organization for so many years now we're in a in a real house and we're sleeping and we're watching all these movies yeah. and and one day I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make dinner tonight. And Mark looks at me. He's like, you know how to cook? <laughs> yeah, we'd been married like, for yes. 12 years. She'd never, ever cooked a meal. Ever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and I'm so, like, of course. And he's like, well, what are you going to make? I'm like, spaghetti bolognese. And he yeah. was like, you know how to make that? I'm like, I was of like, course I do. What is going on? She uh, knows how to cook. <laughs> was like, I yeah. cashed in here. Well, I mean, I taught myself <laughs> to cook by reading the Fanny Farmer cookbook. She, which she I still has to this day. Oh, this wow. yeah. No kidding. Yeah. So my stepdad had asked for that for Christmas one day. And then, um, so I got it for him. I got it for him. And then, so from when I was about 14 to 16, I would look after my siblings who were starting when they were four, two, and just a few months old. I would look after them from noon until midnight every day because I, I wasn't in school and we had no money. So I read the entire cookbook so I could figure out what I could make to feed my, my siblings oh, with God. what we had in, in the cupboard. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so I, I one like one time I made ham croquettes and uh, you know 
whatever. That's fun. That's yeah, so but good. so I I just read the entire cookbook cover to cover. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. she still has it to this day and every I once do. in a while she'll cook something out of there but yep. um but yeah we uh it was kind of weird to to be together the whole first 12 years and that's why some people are like how do you not know some of these things well after you've been married to somebody for 12 years you're not like asking tons and tons and tons of other uh, questions <laughs> and also about the craziness we're sort of like the craziness is over. We're just doing everything now. So there's not really, you know, we don't sit around telling stories about, you know, 50 years ago. Yeah. But, and, um, and, and as you know, when you're in, it's not like it's not like I was going to tell them all the horror stories from my my right, years in the right, cadet yeah. org. Then yeah. then I would just be like, well, no, you that's not a thing you do. It's not you can't do that. You're going to get in a shit ton of trouble. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Right. Excuse my so language. sometimes I mean, when we, you could be married for years and not know very much about your spouse, or exactly. just not Amazing. know a ton of stuff. No, yeah. you'd know. I mean, I know I was there with her for twelve years. I know a lot of the things that she went through, but I didn't know some of the things. So we're doing these we doing these Scientology story videos, and sometimes she'll say something. And I'm just like, what? Yeah. You know, because she'll be telling the story and she might have not told me that one piece. Yeah. So yeah. I know the general story, but I didn't know this one part. Like right. when they went, they went to, there was some guy at their school who was doing stuff with the younger girls that he should, it was a teacher that she, he shouldn't right. have been doing it. And she almost ended up going, he like called her and another girl into his office or something. And Claire was like, I ain't going in there. And then the she girl that knew. did go in, something she happened knows. and later up it came out. And I'm just, I'm like, this was at the Scientology school that you No, went that to? that was at St. Hill. That was a, C, a member of the Sea Organization. Oh my. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just like it what? Yeah. Uh, wasn't there some dude at Greenfields though? That yeah, was, that but that was the, that was just the a teacher separate that thing. was messing with male students. Oh, I get it. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, who but, ended so, up in jail. <laughs> sometimes they right. tell these stories and you're just like, "What?" Yeah. So yeah, anyway, Matt, amazing. I've I've been doing work with Matt and we you know, spend about a, a few weeks together every few months. And Matt has the best stories. That's why even when we were talking about doing a channel, I was like, oh, Matt could tell, Matt could tell, he could tell a hundred hours worth of stories yeah, and, <laughs> and have another hundred already ready in the chamber. I mean, yeah. he has the most hilarious, not only the Sea Org stories, because somehow Matt, when he was in Clearwater, he had it worked out. Yeah, like, I know. He was, he was on a boat, it. like a, a Scientologist yeah, had a him. boat at the dock, and he just like mosey on down to the boat during lunch and go fishing. And you're just like, <laughs> wow. dude, you they were in another Sea Org. You were not in the Sea Org <laughs> that no. I was in. And and, and 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 you think about it, it's like, yeah, no, I was in the real Sea Org. I was in the sea on a boat, you know, like <laughs> fishing. Like yeah, you were in the middle of the desert. You weren't in the Sea Org, dude. <laughs> yeah, I had the boat down in the Clearwater Marina, and uh, it had uh, black leather furniture and black leather couch, red carpet, you know, bedrooms, a bathroom, a bar, fully outlaid bar. Wow. We had a lot of parties there. Like when these parties were started really not being good at the, you know, at the base, guys would come to the boat and we would have a party there and we'd play poker and stuff all night. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah. See, I all can't these even. Things that I was always trying to be good and follow the rules and everything. Yeah, me like too. That. Well, even at the base, it was like I mean, and that was the story that I thought was a fun um, story. Was when we? Do you remember that time, Claire? Like you in the early '90s, the base was in a, a town called Gilman Hot Springs. So the nearby towns were San Jacinto and Hemet and they were they were just they butt up against each other and they would butt up against Gilman Hot Springs so as San Jacinto or Gilman Hot Springs up here and then Hemet and then San Jacinto yeah. and so if you went in if you were at the base and you lived at the base you never left well for a long time in the early 90s there was so many people arriving to the base that they had to get these apartments and there were some apartments in Hemet and there were some apartments in San Jacinto and so you were already sort of in the town when you went home. Yeah. So if, if it was 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, it's just like, I'm just going to go 
right over to In and Out over here and go get some. I can't believe or, you did that. Or we're going to go to Vaughn's, or we're going to go. I didn't go. Even know there was an In and Out or a Vaughn's. Well, but in Hammett, and I lived there for twenty freaking years. But if you lived with somebody who had a car, or you yeah, knew yeah. if you were friends with somebody who had a car, then you could get because it was probably a ten minute drive from the apartment to the in and maybe 15 to the in and out and the the mall and you know all the stuff in town well because we were only home from like 11 p.m to 7 a.m there On wasn't a, a lot day. wasn't a lot yeah. of things open yeah. well <laughs> in and out just happens to be one of those places that's open wow. pretty late well so, and on then the it closed at midnight so well, but on yeah, the weekends, well, it was open late. On yes. Friday and Saturdays, it was open mm-hmm. late. So if you got home at 1, you could still go to In-N-Out and get a burger. Or you could go – when Walmart opened, when Walmart opened, that was sort of like a revolution because yeah. Walmart was 24-7s. <laughs> Walmart was 24-7s. So you yeah. could go in there. You could get home at 3 and then go, hey, psh, I'm going to zip over to Walmart and <laughs> pick up about $10 worth of groceries. <laughs> yeah, right. Because I'm, I'm a baller. I got 10 bucks left after coffee and cigarettes. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, you go to Walmart, you could get something. But, um, but then there was this survey that was done. That was in 1993, the on-base, off-base yeah. survey. Oh, my God, I know that survey. So when this survey got done... And the purpose of it, I know the purpose of the, it. The the uh, this survey it was it was a it was a printed thing, and it was called the on base or off base survey. And now there were these surveys happened every once in a while. They'd send out a survey. Now in the C organization, you gotta know that this just is not like somebody who wants to. They want to, they're just trying to find out what you think about this or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I like <laughs> honestly. I think it was the only survey ever done in the history of the base i mean i don't know i'd never been oh, surveyed no. before oh no they did surveys all the time in gold oh okay yeah never. Okay, this was the enough. this might have been the only survey that was done to the entire base every right. single person on the base had yes. to do this survey like it was mandatory and you couldn't yeah. say oh i don't care like i remember steve hodkin is the person that did the survey on me and i was like i don't care whatever i'll live wherever i'm told to live of course, I wanted to live off base, but I knew better by that point. You know, yeah. I was like, eh, there's always going to be a There's a catch. Yeah. yeah. There's so, going to be a catch. They so, were fishing. They were fishing for disaffected people. Big time. Exactly. So basically, the survey said, do you want to live on base? If no, why? If yes, why? Do you live want to live off base? <laughs> if yes, why? If no, why? And then it was sort of like, what amenities would you like? And you know, and so, so everybody does this survey. Okay, everybody fills this thing out. Was it the next day, or yeah. was it like the end of the week, or what? Do you? It was remember? a day or two later. Yeah, a couple days later, is it going to be a base briefing? And everybody get, has to go down to the eating, the dining hall, MCI, Massacre Canyon Inn, and uh, go down there. And we're going to get, we're setting up at, for a briefing. You know, set it up. Yeah. And, then, uh, and, and we should know for the audience when there's, when you find out there's going to be a base briefing, it's never. Oh, it's good. it's never it's like you never. guys are rock stars. We're having no. a party. That's not what's happening. It's never, it's never good. It's never a good day when there's a base briefing. Someone's That's getting fair, right. Yeah, someone's getting carried out of this in a body bag for sure, if not yeah. multiple people. Yeah. And uh, so we get there, and sure enough, oh, and this is the other reason, is, um, like it's the briefings at let's say the briefing's going to be at seven thirty, okay? So seven o'clock. People start showing up, setting up, getting everything ready. By 7.15, all the chairs are there. Everything's set. And then the organizations of the base would would sit in various sections. So the Golden Era production guys, we all sat in the back. Mm-hmm. And then in front of us sat the Commodore's Messenger organization, CMO Gold. They would sit in front of us. And then CMO Int would sit in a section and Exec Strata would sit in a section and all the different units would all sit in their sections. And in the very, very tippy tippy front, RTC <laughs> would sit. And they would they would take up like the front two or three rows of the dining hall 
would be all RTC. And when once everybody was seated, then somebody would say, you know, call David Miscavige to say, okay, everyone is seated. And at that point, it could be a half hour. I it know. could be five minutes. It could be three hours. Whenever he wanted, he would come. And and the door, he would come in. He had his own special entrance to the Masker Canyon Inn called the Department 21 or the COB entrance. Mm-hmm. And so he only came in and out through that door. And so that way, he, because it had a compartment, you could go in and then you could actually see. Exactly. And look it had a little ante place. room so mm-hmm. he could come inside and no one would know he had come inside. Yeah. And then he could be in there for five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. He could have a cigarette. He could do mm-hmm. whatever. He'd do whatever. And then he'd come in. Well, yeah. if you were really, really savvy, you could watch the wind because that, that, the two doors <laughs> that, <laughs> the two doors that came into there had glass. They had glass. I'll be right back. And uh-huh. if you, and if you open the outside doors, the, the glass would kind of go, it would shudder. It would just yeah, be a little yeah. bit of buffer. And then you knew, like, okay, hey, whoo, whoo, look. Look, look, look alive. It's about to go down. <laughs> and so there's a few of us that knew like, knew oh, we're not getting caught off guard when he comes in. And when as soon as he walked through those doors, everybody had to stand at, at attention. Yeah. Anyway, he reads, he, he goes on a tirade about how off purpose we are and how off source, meaning we're not following our Ron Hubbard policy and all these things because a whole bunch of people don't even want to live on the property. They want to live off of the property. And the reason why they want to live off the property is to go to Vaughn's <laughs> and to go to in and out and to go shopping and go to the mall on Sunday morning and do all these things that you do in the real world, which we shouldn't have anything to do with. And right. so... Um, yeah, everybody on, who wrote on. off, everybody who wrote off base was immediately assigned lowered conditions. Yeah. Every single wow. one of those people was immediately you're in lower condition. I think it was they were conf- off basers, you know, like no. they all got labeled. Oh no, it, it would be it would be one of those things when you'd be like, yeah, no, Tim is in trouble and he's doing this and he's doing. He also happened to be one of the off base people. Yeah, and, it, it was uh, like a permanent you know, disqualification. It, it was literally like a mm-hmm. it was a mark on your record, like mm-hmm. oh. What about what did you do about this and what did you do? And, oh, I've been good. I got, weren't you one of those off basers? And you're just like, oh man. So luckily, I knew how to play the game. I wrote on Me base. Too. I put. I answered that thing just like I put all the answers they wanted to hear. Even though I was like a, I was, <laughs> I was Doctor Vaughn's. I was at Vaughn's. I was at Walmart. I was at In and Out. I was, I was getting all that good stuff. Doctor <laughs> Anyway, what, what, so what did you answer, Amy? Oh, I said on base. I knew that it was a seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. Probably 98% of the people wanted to live off base. Yeah. And 50% of them were stupid enough to write off, <laughs> off base. <laughs> the other people were like, I'm writing on base. Yeah. I was I was born on the weekend, not last weekend. <laughs> I know how this place works. Yeah. Anyway, the part that I was going to tell you was as part of that, there was another thing that was done, and this is why I knew they did other surveys. That, this is the only reason I even told the story about the survey is because I want. There was another survey. David Miscavige was fed up. Oh, but with, let me say just just yeah. on that one real quick. Yeah. Because then the next thing that David Miscavige did was he oh, put yeah. a huge Vaughn's sign over our little tiny closet of a canteen. Um, because everyone wants to ha- go to Vaughn's. So now he just <laughs> labeled our stupid canteen Vaughn's. Well, and- to be fair, they did also start carrying things that people were going to Vaughn's to get because they didn't have it in the canteen. Like you couldn't get Q-tips or, yeah, you, you know, sham- there was they had some shampoos or stuff, yeah, but you grannies. couldn't get the stuff they had was not the good stuff. It was the stuff they could get for cheap and then mark it up and then sell it to us, us schmucks, for for more than we should be paying for it. Yeah. And didn't um, didn't they even for a while have little mini shopping carts outside? Do you yeah, there that? was yeah. there yeah. was yeah. a shopping cart outside after yeah. the Vaughn sign. And then, up. And then as part Nick of the Raconin, rub it in, Nicholas Raconin tore down the sign because you know. But this isn't Vaughn's, you know, whatever. Anyway, it got into big trouble and it was made to go back up. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, it was like, dude, d- what, not, some rando didn't put that sign up. Dave Miscavige <laughs> had that sign put up, you maniac. Yeah. Hey, oh shout my out, gosh. he didn't know that. Shout out to Nick Raconan. He's on yeah, my. No. He's uh, he's out. He's not in there in that yeah, crazy he's place. Out. He's a pilot yeah. still. He flies he and he's like a he whole flew, pilot group. I went and, up in, in the air with him. So did I. We did went. We went located. Oh no, we went location scouting to San Francisco in a plane. Him and I. Wow. Oh yeah, we flew all over. He let me fly. He literally showed me how to fly the plane and wow. showed me like keep the compass here and we're gonna switch to this frequency. And he's yeah. like, wake me up when we get where when we get yeah. to that one and I'll help you set the new beacon. And he went to he went and took a nap. Oh my God. First time I've ever been in a plane. I flew to San Francisco <laughs> on beacons. In a little Cessna 172 or some nonsense we, like that. And we went up with him one Christmas. We did. We, we oh, nice. I would just, yeah. I would, we would save up and I would just get gas. That's all he wanted. He just, he yeah. had a, the, whatever he had set up with the plane, um, they would let him take it out and they just wanted him to fill it up or something like that. So mm-hmm. whenever I would throw him a couple bucks for fuel, we'd go up. Yeah. But, um, okay. So, oh, but, 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 sorry, by the way, it's time for our next giveaway. Let me just okay. finish the survey story, then we do the giveaway, and then okay, we're done. Okay, 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 fine. Yep. Anyway, there was a survey. David Miscavige hated that the buildings on the property were all referred to by their number. Because when they right. did the base master plan, they said, okay, this is building this, this is building that, this is build, And whatever names they had when we got there, for the most part, those are the names that they all kept. But mm-hmm. the buildings that got built newly, they were never there. So that was the manufacturing building was building number 36. So mm-hmm. everyone called it building 36. Always. And, and building 50 was his, his and office. And then his yes. building, when it got built, was building number 50. And all the buildings, so a lot of these buildings were just referred to by numbers or their old name that had nothing to do with what they did now. The and so, yeah, the tavern, <laughs> the ranchos, the G's, the, the G keepers, G, uh, Greek's keepers house, all these different things, the GK, all these things just kept their names for OGH, mm-hmm. Old Gilman House. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so he did this survey. And he he said, the buildings are getting new names and we want to find out what people want them to be called. (laughs) And so they sent this survey out. And I thought, well, I don't know how I could. There's no way this one could turn on me because it's a building (laughs) name. So I thought they said, what would you like um, building 36 to be called? Well, I was sort of like the dude in Building 36. I worked in HEM. I worked in systems. I worked in manufacturing. I was the producer in the executive division. So I was like, I know this building inside and out. And I spent a, quite a bit of time down at Department 3 as well. Um, that's <laughs> the investigations you department. <laughs> that's where you go when you get in trouble. That's also in the same building. Yeah. Um, it's down the, down the hall from my office. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, so I wrote down what I thought it should be called, which was the Marky Mark trailer park and a, <laughs> an adjacent expansion mansion. Okay. And that's what I wrote on the thing. And <laughs> the Marky Mark trailer park with the, the adjacent COB expansion. Survey? What's that? Did you know it was a COB survey? I didn't know who the survey was, but I thought about it. I was like, okay, this was after the off base on base one, but I'm like, there's no way, <laughs> like there's no way anyone's name is going to get accepted. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought. Like, this is first ridiculous. Like, yeah. we're going to find out what the staff want to call the buildings. Like, who gives a shit? It's building 36. It's always going to be building 36. <laughs> anyway, so I wrote Marky Mark Trailer Park with adjacent expansion mansion. Anyway, and I don't remember what happened, but we were at some meeting and somebody brought up somebody. I heard somebody say the words expansion mansion. And I was like, my ears kind of pricked up. (laughs) Somebody, I was like, that survey might have gone a little higher than I thought it went. Anyway, and then at some point, um, Dave Miscavige was like, really? Marky Mark Trailer Park? You think we're going to call? And I was just like, I was like, who can? I was just like, it was funny. I, I like, really? Like, does anything matter anymore anyway at this place? And the best part is, they whatever they called them they buildings did come out with names eventually it was called like this is now going to be called the dissemination menu dissemination division or something was what the man was what the manufacturing building building 36 was supposed to be called and i guarantee you 
I mean, even after that, for years, we called it Building 36. No, yeah. And Building 50 was always Building 50. And unless you were talking to Dave, you would call the, you would say, I'll be up at the RTC building. And every once in a while, people would slip and be like, well, when we were at Building 50, and you'd be like, I mean, uh, uh, um, when we were at the RTC building, and it's like, <laughs> and then it would be like, what, which RTC building? You'd be like, uh. Building 50. <laughs> uh, building 50. And you'd be like. Uh, no, the upper villas and the upper villas was another one. It was the lower yeah. villas, the middle villas and the upper villas and the upper mm -hmm. middle, upper villas and the middle villas were RTC, right? And the lower villas were the birthing for the yeah, RTC. Yeah, scavenges birthing. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, it was ridiculous. But regardless, <laughs> um, those are the, those are a few of the fun things that I can yeah. do. <laughs> okay. So now we got to do a giveaway and then we got to get to some comments because I have a hard cut off in 27 minutes oh my okay. goodness yeah. we haven't wow. answered any questions i know okay. that's why i'm moving this forward because obviously okay. we're gonna have to have you young gentlemen back because this was way too much fun oh, yes. yeah. oh yeah this is fun well this is for my book scientology abuse at the top signed by my husband and i and we will go to the comments here Let's see, those are the stars. I'll go to the live. So okay, so yep. if you would like a Scientology be Abuse of the Top book by me, signed by my husband and I, say book me. Book me. Book me. <laughs> and I'm going to count from five, four, three, two, one. Carmen. Carmen, you got it. Congratulations, you got it. Nice. Carmen. You are a winner tonight, Carmen. Yay. You are a winner. So if you could just send me an email, amy at scoby hyphen, no, yeah, hyphen publishing.com, <laughs> <laughs> then you will be mailed a book. Is it dash? Oh, Could it also be dash or? I think so. It's scoby publishingcom It's just, yeah. I think it's politically correctly. Yeah, but hyphen. everybody knows what a dash is. Not everybody knows yes. what a hyphen is. So just say dash. Yes, we'll I, think, I think technically a dash is two hyphens if we're going to get political about it. Oh, but that's, right. key, that's what I was going to say. Keyboard yeah. wise, it's the hyphen. Yeah, the hyphen, hyphen is the small one and a dash is the double sided. Yeah, it's oh, basically I got it. double oh, sized. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Or, yep. or it could okay. be the other way around, or it could be uh, called a, a ghibli gog. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think people good. know what I mean, but yes. Um, anyway, so that is wonderful, and they get that book. So that's that's really good. We'll go on to the comments now, right? Yep. Um, so, so I'll, I'll read the over. questions, and we'll... I wanted to say one thing because I almost forgot, which is um, at those parties at the Massacre Canyon Inn, Shelley Miscavige and I arm wrestled. Wow. Yeah, did, did you really? win? You know, I almost had it all the way down and Mark Yeager was taking all these photographs. So they have photos and she and um and then she like called it to stop before I just got oh, it. Oh man. And, um, and then and then she said um she sent me a bunch of the other pictures of that night, but she said the arm wrestling ones didn't turn out. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, wow. so I'm going to the starred questions. Here we go. All right, Kaz Ferns, hoping to see glimpses of SP pups. Love y'all. Yep, Thank you got you. them. Yes, <laughs> yes <definitely> got <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Diana B, it's double date night. Yes, exactly. Fun, fun, <laughs> fun. <laughs> John Zatowski, Mike is the pepperoni on the SPTV pizza. Enough said. Nice. Okay, then. Sure. All right, Nicole the Kiwi, proud to be an Everin. So much love and respect to you all from your biggest New Zealand fan. Oh, that's nice. awesome. Thank Great. you wow. for being here. Mark Fisher in the house. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Mark, for my spy files. I love my OSA, quote, code name, unquote, MOFO. F -E -OSA. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, that is a fun thing. So Mark Fisher in the SP files, he is not referred to as Mark Fisher by Dave. Dave always refers to him as MOFO. Mark wow. Fisher, MOFO. And... Uh, <laughs> And um, yeah, so somebody emailed me saying, because they, their files, I sent them to multiple people, but somebody said, who's MoFo? Is that Mark Fisher? And I was like, yep, that's Mark Fisher. 
Unbelievable. <laughs> Always a dig from David. Yeah. Miscavige. Oh yeah. Dave can't uh, can't no. uh, can't hold back. Yep. Yes. And hummingbird. Hi, I was watching from Amy's page and was all alone. LOL. Oh, you guys got to go watch on Amy's page. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Got to get her subs up. Yeah, go over to my page and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, some of the all alone there. No. Yeah, some of these new SPT never ends. They're trying to get their um, channels uh, monetized. And um, is it Denver? Yeah, Denver Stevo. He has. Um, He's doing videos. They're called Sleeping with Stevo. And he puts on, he goes on. He's like, hey guys, welcome to the channel. Da 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 da. And he's like, okay, I'm going to sleep. And he just gets up. <laughs> and he puts on some music and he turns out the lights. Like, he just turns off these lights, but the background lights and everything are all still on. And he, it just plays all night long, the music. And then he comes in in the morning and he's like, hey, good, good. It's a good time. We did a good video there. That's <laughs> pretty they're, awesome. They're like nine hour videos. He's trying to get his watch hours up. So there other people are going to the channel and just putting it on and leave it on and go to sleep oh, to it. Wow. Just some background oh music to sleep to. <laughs> Yeah, and rest assured, Amy, there's tons of people on your page. They're all commenting. All right, okay. PA Girl, 913. Thank you, PA Girl. My absolute fave for people on YouTube, plus Jackson. Can we please get Goldie a buy me a cup of coffee link? Oh, that's not awesome. a bad idea. Yeah. That's a yeah, great and, idea. And, and, yeah, well, absolutely. Goldie has to do it, though. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'll get with Goldie on that. And also in the interim, if you'd like to show Goldie some love, you can go to our, the, the Blown for Good merch store and just do a donation and just say in the comment that it's for Goldie and Goldie knows I pass it on to her yeah. immediately. So that's great. And that's just awesome. and just so everybody knows, we also do take care of Goldie. Separately. We do. We do. Yeah. She's not she she insisted that she do it without being taken care of and we refused and so she does get to, at least we do that i don't know if yeah. all the other channels do we have suggested to other channels you might want to throw her a bone yeah. every once in a while we, so. we yeah. just yeah. we just personally speaking for mark and i um having worked for 46 dollars a week for 14 years we're not a fan yeah. <laughs> if you're doing uh, my, my you know, we were trying to save the world and we didn't <laughs> and so we believe in, you know, when there's there's really good people who cross your paths. And in this YouTube world, there are many such people. We just believe, you know what? Um, we want to show those people that we love and respect them, not just by saying so, but by actually meaningfully yeah. doing so. so. It is it is my firm philosophy that if you do good work, you should be paid for it. So yes, right. um, Goldie does amazing work. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Okay, Selena Michelle, love my SPTV. Please hit the like button. Yes, thank you, Selena, for being here, and we appreciate that brilliant suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> and I love your dog photo. Yeah. All right, Fabian Andiel, what would happen if you criticized LRH's overweight or teeth in Scientology? Not the tech. Oh yeah, no. You'd be gone. Yeah, that's not like a good fast. Idea. Real Sayonara. Fast. Yeah, no, no bueno. <laughs> I think you. I think you learn early on. Uh, you get. You keep your opinions. Uh, keep those locked up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Kathy Ann. Hey, heroes. Was rewatching old SPTV and had a question. Did TC get in trouble for Katie being pregnant before their wedding? Osa. Lots to keep up with now. Yeah. No. No, uh, TC did not get in trouble because that that's uh, that rule and policy only applies to members of the C organization, which Tom Cruise definitely is not. One right. Of. Yeah. Yeah. That's no. yeah. Also, Scientologists can do whatever they want. They can have you know five kids by five different mothers. It's sort of like whatever. It doesn't. They're not. That's not a thing in Scientology. It's only in the C organization where you're not. There's none of that intermingling. Yes. Yeah. Jay, Claire, you were awesome in that interview with A. A. Ron. I think, Jay, you might be meaning Andrew Gold because that's what we talked about today. It's been, a, I think, about two years since I did a one on one interview with A. A. Ron. Um, but thank you either way. I appreciate it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn Honig. Yay. Coffee, Colts, and Crafts. Don't forget to subscribe to Marilyn on YouTube. Just wanted to say hi and thank you for all you do. Woohoo. I love 
Wonder Women Wednesdays. You guys are great too. That's a good name. Oh yeah, no, I figured out right after starting the channels like Claire. Yeah, Claire, Claire. They like Claire. Put do Cla more videos with Claire. Claire, you want to do more videos? Yeah. Okay, good. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> Selena Michelle, all hail Queen B. <laughs> Love you, babe. Hit the like button, please. Awesome. Thank yes. You. <laughs> Love that nickname. Yes. I have some fun, um, some fun intro outro with a new logo that I made. It's fun. I'll have to show you guys. Oh, Ooh. awesome. Jefferson Hawkins in the house. If Jeez. Dave wants to figure out OT9 and 10, maybe he should hit the rum and coke for a few weeks and maybe <laughs> he could come up with something. Oh, I could think of. I could think of all kinds of substances he could take to figure out some stuff. <laughs> you think he's got some crazy ideas now. Oh, my goodness. There's There's been a bunch of people that have told us, oh, uh, chat GPT could get on that. No problem. Yeah. People have oh, said that'd me. that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, people have asked uh, some AI application to write the OT levels, and they've yes. sent them to me, and it's insanity. It's crazy. <laughs> so crazy. Wow. KC429, hopefully I'm saying that correct. Claire should have kissed him on the cheek and said, see you next week. Let him deal with a mad boss baby karma, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> All righty, Cindy, ooh, Ziskowitz. Cindy Ziskowitz, that's my last, last go. Love the four of you. Hi, Osa. Plenty of folks waiting to love you. Come on out and get it. Yes. Oh my God, the Osa guys, how can they watch so much video? No, I know, I know. I know. And they how know can they, how can they not true. laugh at a lot of this? I mean, come on. Yeah. Can yeah. you imagine if they have a control room at Osa now and it just has all these screens with all <laughs> yeah. these videos? They probably do. They yeah, have that, to. that's what I. That's my favorite part of Kelly Copter's SPTV intro is the part where it's like. Osa cams and, <laughs> yeah. and it's Aaron saying there's nothing they can do about this YouTube <laughs> yeah. phenomena. It's just so good. All right, yeah. John Zatowski, too many hands in the soup spoil the cook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good one. Yep. Destiny Salazar. Mark, it was great to see you join in on the chatathon. You've always been so supportive of the greater SPTV community. The chats appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. I I'm really sad I didn't get to join in. I was so trying. I was like madly charging my laptop, but then I couldn't get on the internet. And I'm like, oh, busted. I can't do this. Sorry, yeah, she guys. Wasn't, she wasn't in Colorado. She was no. out of state had, on another yeah. project. So uh, we, I was, uh, you know, I didn't have uh, anything to do. I was like, eh, it's getting and I, late. I'll just and jump I had in to, here. I had to be up at 5.30 the next morning to get on a flight. And I was like, oh, man, I messed, I done messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, just curious. Where does OSA fit in with the whole not-for-profit thing? Sounds like an IRS nightmare. It should be an, an IRS mm -hmm. nightmare. Yeah. OSA does mm -hmm. not fit in with the not-for-profit no. thing, nor no. does it fit in with the we're clearing the planet or saving the world. No, the or OSA is dedicated to we are going to destroy our critics and we will spend whatever millions of dollars we need to to accomplish that. Yeah. Did I tell you, Amy, I found the OSA financial planning documents in these oh. things. They no, spent. They did not. Yeah, in 2000, it was either 2004 or 2005, they spent $65,000 on domain names. That was for one, one year, Amy. And that and was before the Who Is that website. Was before, what? That was before yes. any of us had done oh. any books or anything. Before oh, it's got to be quadruple that now. They were spending 65000 just on domain names. And it stopped nothing. Yeah, and can you imagine what they're spending these days? Oh, no, it's crazy. It's oh, they were, no. yeah. Anyway, these files I've sent them to all kinds of people. Hopefully, some Good. of them can do something with them because there's just oh, yeah. too many for me to do. On that's why there's oh, yeah. been no spy file videos because I've been just reading spy files, trying oh, yeah. to figure out who to send them to, it so those people work. can do some videos. But I, yeah. but but the crazy thing is, I had files on Mark and Janice. They have a YouTube channel. I had yeah. files on you guys. Yeah. You have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. They had files on all these different people that all have YouTube channels now. And I yeah. thought, how insane that they picked all these people <laughs> to mess with. 
<laughs> and those are the people that could do videos about these files. I thought, this is so ridiculous. Yeah. They, and also, talk about utter failure on Kirsten Catano's um, I mean, position. That was her one job. And it even says in these programs to silence absolutely. all the ex members. Did you see the one where it's like the program to silence the yeah. ex members that are speaking out? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, Good job, Osa. You yeah, literally yeah. listed okay. out all these people. They all wrote books. They've been yeah. on TV. They've been in movies. Around you guys are useless. <laughs> I have a message for David Miscavige and all of Osa. You ready? Yes. Flunk. Yeah. yeah. Failed. <laughs> RPF yeah. material. Yeah, yep. <laughs> unbelievable stuff. Yeah, so that's really, I'm hoping that just their financial planning documents, because, you know, it's a it's a proper financial planning. It's the whole entire package. So it's the oh, CSW. I got to see, see, see that. He knows all it's, about the, that it's the completed stuff. staff work, the CSW. Yep. It's the, here's the set-asides. They have all their set-asides. They have a domain name set-aside that has oh. all the bills it has all of the account statements for all of their bank accounts, every single one, what stuff. the balances are. I will send them to you, Matt. Yeah, you will definitely. you will see this and you will be like and then the CS the CSW for what they want to get. So it's like a hundred thousand dollars a week they're spending. Yeah. So it's like we need to pay, we're working on this project and it has whatever it is. There's a guy, his name is you know the guy that did Sham Wow, that video? Yeah. That yeah. guy? Yeah, Vince. Yep. Vince, yeah, Vince. His name is, um, his name is Shlomi. His real right. name, yeah. okay. and he is used to be a Scientologist. The Sham Wow guy used to be a Scientologist, and he sued Scientology. They got into a big, big dust up, and they have did the time when these financial planning documents are from. They are paying lawyers to mess with him and do stuff with him, and it's in the FP. It says Shlomi Fund, and it. <laughs> that, there's five thousand dollars to fight this guy, and when I saw Shlomi, I was like, "Is that the Shamwell guy?" I'm pretty sure Shlomi is the Shamwell <laughs> yeah. guy, and sure enough, yeah. that's exactly what it was. We're gonna have but, to let him know about that too. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure they have a uh, "We won't talk about you if you won't talk yeah. about us" mm -hmm. agreement yeah. now. After that whole lawsuit, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the way it went. He's also um, had all kinds of other adventures, um, but either way, either way. Um, these financial planning documents will blow your mind. Oh, yeah. Uh, Got Matt, it. Uh, Matt, just to see. <clears throat> and they even say what PI. Oh, the other thing. I, I'll say this and then we'll get back to the comments. Mm -hmm. The other thing they say is um, they're, they're paying like all these people on retainers. So like right. these PIs are 5000 a week. This lawyer is $2,000 a week. Uh, Eric Lieberman's $3,000 a week. Elliot Abelson's $5,000 a week. Ooh, and Dave, wow. and Dave was getting freaked out saying, this is bull. These guys are just cashing checks. They're not doing anything. Right. So they, they were detailing out how they're going to switch over to a pay-by-product system. So if you steal Mike Rinder's garbage, you get five hundred bucks. If you get a video of Matt and Amy, you get five hundred bucks. If you if you follow them to the grocery store, you get two hundred fifty bucks. Like it's like a price list of what they <laughs> can. The, each thing is worth money. We're not just paying you five thousand dollars a week to watch these people. You have to do something. And uh, so it's this is all detailed in these documents. Like switching right, over to a, when I send it, Matt. You you you, you have do a to, whole program just on that stuff. Oh, man. that's what yeah. I'm saying. I've been trying to do that, and yeah. I only had thirty documents when I started so I had 30 oh. documents that's it that's all I had was 30 yeah. and then I found the other 5,000 right. and now it's like uh this is not gonna work I can't do <laughs> 5,000 of these a video a week that's gonna take a while oh. <laughs> so wow. anyway I can't wait for people to start seeing oh, yeah. um like other these I'm files do. on these other channels oh you guys are gonna mm -hmm. do a video on them too yeah yeah oh, perfect, oh are you perfect. kidding these, Perfect. these are outrageous. Yeah. People want us, are going to need to see this. Oh, yeah, yeah no. And it's much better coming from the people who are actually <laughs> The ones named. targeted. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right, Honey, you're stories. muted. Mark, you're muted. Some of those, some of the documents have data in there that I wouldn't feel comfortable saying about that they wrote about you guys. Right. right. And yeah. you could so, pick and choose like, well, let's not do this one because this one's just full of nonsense. Or you could yeah. say, let's do this one because this one's full of nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. whichever way. But I felt I feel much better reading the ones about me. And if the other people want to read the ones about them, then they can read the, because it really does see like there's this unknown force. 
that is literally dedicated to destroying your life with unlimited funds. Yeah, yeah. right. Unlimited funds. And, and, you, yeah. and you think they're messing with you. No, no. They are. There's literally a step-by-step program on how they're going to ruin your life. Yeah. And, and they're it's, it's and they're working sad. on it and they're getting yeah. Yeah. and they're getting in trouble that they're not they're getting, getting it done. Yeah, yeah right. they're getting in trouble that there's not enough targets on the ruining uh, Matt and Amy's life program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and so honestly, wild. it's kind of sad. Like the thought has honestly crossed my head, crossed my mind sometimes where I'm like, it's really sad that I know that they would love for me to be dead. It's just sad. I know. I know. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know that they, yeah. they cheer at that kind of stuff because David Miscavige would come into meetings and say, you know, such and such person died from a horse accident as if it was the wo- most awesome thing that ever happened because they had spoken out against Scientology. So, yep. yeah, that's what's on their mind. Yeah. So really. Anyway, we're going to keep exposing it. Yep. Yeah, I, I did manage to get a little bit of an extension, so I don't have to oh, bail good. so quickly. Oh, but, yeah. but I don't have much. I don't have much of an extension. SP Cracker Liquor fan, wow. never in. Yes, love and appreciate you all so much. Your laughter and giggles fill me up. Thanks for all you do, and in for and for encouraging others to set themselves free. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. We appreciate it. Stacy, merch idea. Scientology Monopoly must play for a billion years, but nobody wins. <laughs> just kidding. Just having fun. <laughs> that would actually be awesome. We could do an amazing Monopoly game. Like you get instead of go to jail, you go to the rehabilitation project. First. <laughs> yeah. Mary Sue Hubbard. Hashtag free Shelly. But let's be real. No one looks happy at the DMV. I know. (laughs) So I know. And my honest thoughts are this, though. Having knowing Shelly personally, that picture is a shell, a shell of the woman I knew. And honestly, it looks like a a prisoner war photo. That's just the bottom line. Amy said too when she saw it. Yes. As soon as I saw it. Yeah. Word for word. Yep. No, it's it's terrifying. And her eyes read, help me. Get yeah. out. I mean, that's just that's just how I read that. I don't know mm-hmm. what, any other way to, to look at that. And yeah, that yeah. that's a we should almost dedicate a video just to that whole scenario with the LAPD. But we'll do that another yeah. day. Yes. Yep. Uh, yes. <clears throat> All right. Selena, Michelle, Amy and Matt. How's the new pup? Just fitting in so perfectly. Um, it's really, really good. Yeah. You know, and entertaining. Um, I got all these great little videos, <laughs> which I should probably put something up, but um, of them just wrestling around and just enjoying the heck out of each other. Couldn't be better. Yeah. That's amazing. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, Lathanda Grocklinger. I blushed a little when you said the Neverins are your favorite group. In, in my book, you don't have to be a victim yourself to deeply care and want to change conditions for others who suffer. I know, and you know what? That sums up perfectly exactly why I feel that way, because you know, yeah, just leave it at that. Otherwise, I'm going to start crying. I know. Yay. We could totally talk about that one for a long time. <laughs> yes. But... Yes, we could. <laughs> and Hummingbird again. Aren't DMV pictures in color now? Mine sure is. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. they don't have a color copier at the uh, LAPD there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still, still trying to get that toner well, through they don't uh, have financial they don't planning. Have... Yeah. Apparently, they only have the ink. Uh, finger pads too, you know, to take fingerprints. Oh, they didn't do it gosh. on the electronic one, which has been in use for the last two centuries. Yes. Ridiculous. Oh, that's true. They just yes. have a little scanner they put your hand in now. Yeah. <laughs> that's really yeah. weird now that I think of it. You're right. They're taking ink out there. Yeah. That that's Stone Ages. Joni Cummings. Yeah. Yeah. I always love to see four of my favorite SPTV people, two of my favorite ladies and my and two of my favorite guys sending love to all of you and the Rinders. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Yay. So much. Thank you. Jay, awesome. The coachman opened. Boss baby has to be so pissed. They better not <laughs> lose his apple box so or he may actually kill someone. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you imagine being a fly on a wall over at that place? Oh, I would love oh. to. I would love to. Caroline Wilson. Mitch really seems to still have one one foot still in COS, still defending a plant in SPTV. Uh, I don't yeah, I mean I he's just really I mean guys he just got out like yeah. Yeah. he's fresh I mean that's wow it's yeah it takes it's I it. mean when yeah. Mike Rinder left he was he still uh 
you know, he, he still was, he didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't speak out for many, many years, but right. even when he was still not in the Sea Org, he still believed in the Scientology aspect of everything. So he just yeah. knew David Miscavige wasn't doing what L. Ron Hubbard, you know, kind of dictated that he should be doing. Comes off in layers. Yes. But, um, Nobody but, but ever then, walks out from Scientology and is instantly. Mitch tied. was in since the 70s, right? Yeah. I yeah. think he was yeah. I think 1974 John, John or something. was pretty quick. He, he came out and went straight to the FBI. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, that's true. That's well, true. Yeah, but even then he, you know, but even so it wasn't. It well, wasn't I read his, a, his messages and it was all about still doing it for the benefit of Scientology. That's, that's right. right. But also he had some help because the first people he went to was oh, Marty and Mike. So yeah. he, they'd yeah. already had years <laughs> of kind of decompressing to get him yeah. up to speed really quick. <laughs> and also yeah. he was, he was, when Plus, JB left, he was sort of like, you know, I did a ton for you guys, and I did a oh. bunch of awesome stuff. And, and they were chasing him down. You're throwing me yes. under the bus, and so we're gonna we're gonna do this the way on my terms. And he really, you know, I want to give I'll give a hand to JB. He is doing it. He's living the life. He's got kids, yeah. and he's got a, you know, they're they're traveling, and they're do. He's doing the dad gig and the have a job and have a house, and a, he's he's a you know he's doing yeah. a stellar job right now so yes, yes. No, that's awesome. i gotta give yeah. him props yeah yep. mary Kay. i read cheap trick is playing at coachman park good oh okay. awesome that would be that'd amazing be <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. you go sp cracker liquor fan treats for all the sps oh, oh good Yay. snacks did somebody say <laughs> snacks all the SP yeah snacks on snacks on snacks <laughs> Snacks on snacks on snacks. Snacks on snacks on snacks. <laughs> Destiny Salazar. Should we lobby our representatives to build concert venues next to all the <laughs> ideal orgs? <laughs> Such a great idea. Yeah. Such a great idea. All you buskers out there, the best place to busk is right outside of Scientology Center. <laughs> yes. Um, Kelly A. Amy, maybe you could organize a mass mailing date dates and announced through banners on all the SPTV channels. That's interesting. Okay, so that's a possibility. Don't you think it would just be better if they just they were just always getting them as opposed to yeah. setting it up like do them now? Because if you <laughs> all order postcards well, I guess they really would just print Let, and all ship at the let's same get, time. Let's get input from the, from the person I mentioned. Um, Amy, I'll share this email with you for, okay. as well. Um, okay. Because this person had very, very good input, I think. Okay, so, I would yeah. love that. I think Thank we you. collaborate on that. We'll we'll take that into consideration. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Denver Stevo in the house. Denver Stevo loves you all. Thanks again for stopping in on Monday night. Osa smells like poo. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you, Denver Stevo. Yes. Uh, Shayna P. Lawnerd. At Denver Stevo, I'm a mod there. Oh, awesome. Oh, yes, nice. Shanna, yeah, Shanna is a mod. She's been a mod on one of those other channels. Nice. nice. That's she's, awesome. She's their Goldie. Nice. L. Went. Is it a problem for law enforcement that docs, spy files, aren't on letterhead or have names, just office initials? Oh, no. They, um, I don't think, hmm. The, obviously, they're not like going to be like uh, Church of Scientology International letterhead. <laughs> please destroy these people's lives. Signed. This is my name, my birthday, my date of birth. No, they're um the 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 whole purpose of these documents is to be a little bit like not on the main communication lines uh, on the science the, none of these documents are on the Scientology internal message system yeah. these are uh, word documents that are being written and then just shared back and forth word documents so that they don't have an email or they don't have that the way they would transfer these things is over FT uh, file transfer protocol I think it's FTP sites and they would somebody yeah. would have a folder and another person would have a folder and it would be an encrypted transmission of these files back and forth um problem is is when you when you send a file you usually put a in a folder called sent 
and then that folder, that sent folder, just builds up and builds up and builds up. And then um, if you happen to put it on a thumb drive and leave it in your briefcase for five years, and then somebody gets that briefcase and then opens it up and goes, what's on here? And then suddenly your OSA documents are all over the internet. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway. By, by, the way, by the way, Mark, I have a question. Um, so I, when I was going through a bunch of them the other day, I saw this reference to D-line. D-line that's the, materials. That's the, that's, that's the trash. That's when they steal your garbage. That's called yes. the D line. That's okay. what it's. That's its oh. code name. And so, yes. if you guys are reading the documents and they said yeah. the D line is going to happen on Thursday, yeah. right. or the other thing it's mentioned, I think in a lot of the are these newer files or the, the during the time period that you guys have some files in, they call that special collection. Yes. So special whenever collection. you he whenever you see um, the D line or um, special collection that means they're picking up your garbage that week or they just yeah. pick a little dictionary of Oser yeah terms. yeah no, or... we started that we started that okay yeah, yeah. You, we'll get together. you know yes. one of them that I saw was from whole MR via whole this person yes. to yes. the inspector general something or other but like that so that was so their post title whole if, if yes. you were in the hole at the end base yeah. then your name or your initials were preceded by whole yeah, so yeah. it would so say whole M R. They're saying there was such a thing as a whole. We've got your stupid documents, guys. Yes. <laughs> Literally, there are so many whole documents that you're wow. just like, this is really crazy. And they're really revealing too. They are like, like that they label all these people who are not on different posts that used to be at the base as D B. They have the name D B. D B is means which for people degrade. listening is degraded being, which yeah. means it's essentially like you may as well be a bum on the street. You have no yeah. value, you have no, no intelligence, value. you're incapable of producing anything, incapable of communicating, you may as well be a non entity. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they're labeling we'll have hundreds to do a whole of people. show just on all that stuff. I know. Oh yeah, my right? gosh! I when, know. That's, oh well, I was going to tell you guys if you start going through them, you have to make a limit because yeah. you yeah. could read yes. these files for days and not yeah. be like, "What the uh, hell?" I know. It's, it's really, it's really dark. And, and so just dark. Picturing being back in the place, you know. Oh, I know. No, that's I know. the thing that's With so that crazy mentality. about me is the OSA guys were out. And we're doing our thing and they have to watch us and they have to find out everything that we're doing. Yeah. How could they not be like, we got to get out of here. Like they're I like, know. we followed them to the beach. Then we followed them. They went to the restaurant <laughs> Then we followed them to the hotel. Then we followed them to the concert. And you're just yeah. like, we were what celebrating we at IHOP. <laughs> yeah. It's like, but no, but even still, you're like, they're living it up and yeah. we're sitting here watching. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I it's crazy. Debbie Cook, you know, video and, and not want to just get out right. of there. I mean, right. come on, guys. you're on the wrong side of the, the fence, man. I'll yeah, say you're one... on the wrong side of history. Let's <laughs> I'll just say, let's one just more say thing. it right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say Outside one more evil. thing and we'll get back to the comments. Yeah. The funniest part of these files is they're like, Jimmy Yo has also mentioned this black propaganda about David Miscavige beating people up. And we're going to get to the bottom of where he heard it from. And then it's like, but there's like 25 people like, uh, oh, yeah, another ex base person said he'd also witnessed uh, David Miscavige getting violent people. And we're going to trace this back to where this came from. And it, but it's like the OSA guys are like, you think they'd be at this point, they'd be like, I think David Miscavige might have been beating people up up there. <laughs> it seems to be 87 people now. Yeah. I mean, we, how dense can you be yeah, if, you, we, if you think that 100 people all witnessed in total detail him beating people? Yeah, yeah. it's like we traced it back, sir. Where did it come from? <laughs> came from somebody watching you beat people up. That's where it came from. <laughs> It came from you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Evidently, when you beat people up, there's folks around watching. Yeah. It's happening. Who knew? Susan B., so excited to see you two lovely couples. Finally ordered Mark's book. Can't wait to read. Yay. Yeah. Thank you for Good being book. here, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Selena Michelle to Mango and Kiwi from Maxwell for treats. Oh, Yay. wow. Now we have dogs yeah. giving other dogs treats on you. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so that's awesome. It's a brave All new world, love. folks. Brave new for, world. For yes. Sharing the love. <laughs> yes. Jay, Mark and Claire still working on the free Xenu art. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Thank free you. Zenu. I yes. like that free Xenu. Yes. yes. 
Gary Jackson Moorhead in the house. Yes. That happened another time with him. I tried smelling salts, running a pen up, down, bottom of foot, sternum rub. Oh, wow. This must be the Jacques story. Jacques huh? Bousseau. Yeah, that yeah, happened another crazy. time with him. Yeah, that is true. He did do that another time. It wasn't just that one. Wow. <laughs> so wow. I remember and, that now. Yeah. But he and didn't. He didn't fall asleep in the battery room that time. I think he just fell asleep in his, like, behind his machines in his office or something. But that time he also did fall asleep for, like, two oh, days, I remember. That's crazy. And, I and mean, hey, shout out position. to Jackson for his channel. Get on over there and subscribe. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. All right, Kathy O'Toole, what happened to the poor guy who slept for three days? Well, I think we covered that. Well, he yeah, moved to he, Canada. He did actually end up um, escaping, and I think he moved back to Canada. So nice, Lady Muk S E two thousand, Lady M C S E two thousand. Yes. Yay! Thank you for the super thank sticker. You. Yay, M C S E. Yay, Gary Jackson Moorhead again. I had Jacques taken to the hospital and found his body was shutting down, inducing his deep sleeps as his intestines were clogged, not pooping, and septic setting in. Wow, he's wow. lucky he didn't end up with sepsis then. That's crazy. Lucky he didn't die. Yeah. yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Mary Sue Hubbard again. In my crew, if someone passed out with their shoes on, was fair game to take a Sharpie and put lewd doodles on their face. Was this done in the Sea Org? No, no, I don't. We all think... have doodles on our face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I oh, think if you... time when you. No, no, we're just like... <laughs> <laughs> I think if you did something like that, you could get uh, you could get punched out. That wouldn't be. That's not yeah. a. That's not a. Uh, there's not a lot of pranking in the no. Sea Org. And no. in the few pranks I did, there's hate videos about every single one of them up on my website. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, Stacy, has Scientology ever harassed a non-Scientologist just because we talk negative and are, quote, guilty by association, unquote, sort of speak? Just curious if they're that paranoid. Uh, journalists, um, there were a TV few people that were on ARS too in the spy files that they were going after who were never in. Uh, professors, yeah, sure. yeah, there was yeah. a professor by the name of uh, Dave Turetsky. They, he, he might have, arguably, he might have more files than anyone else in the spy files. Yeah, never a Scientologist. He was actually the one that they were fighting over because he was putting. Um, the Xenu story out there back in the 80s and early 90s, I think. And um, they did not like that. And um, uh, he I actually, I, we emailed with him the other day and he said, um, everybody knows about Xenu now. I, there's nothing more I could do. <laughs> He's like, it's yeah, been on South like Park. It's been on the movies and TVs. Like, the word's out. It's the, yeah. the, there's no more there's no more action on that. <laughs> yeah, and it was crazy. There were phone taps, all kinds of crazy stuff. But he 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 said, "Yep, they didn't ruin my life, not one bit. I'm yeah. still kicking." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Jay, Mark, and Claire. I didn't even blown for good yet, so I got the audio book. I just wanted to tell you too. It was so awesome how you stuck together through all that hell. Mark, your son using the book in school. You're a rock star. <laughs> yeah, he did get an A on that, as far as yes. that, that, that's the yes, word. Yeah. He did. Amber Vaness, I saw it. Thanks. Oh, that's Amber. You won the book, and I got your email. Yay! I start. I start it just so you guys would know that. She yes. Saw it. Yeah, no, I got her email. Kaz Ferns, a small contribution to see Mark in drag. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I, if Claire or I find the photo, I'll yeah. show it. because it's, I know I, we have it somewhere. I've seen it. I, yeah. Even I was like, who's this broad? I was like, oh, that's <laughs> me. <laughs> Gino Dean, Jerry, Sarasota Jerry in the house. Besides rice and beans, what was your favorite food served at Gold? My personal answer to that is none of it. <laughs> oh, a combination fried rice all day long. They had well, a fried rice that I could eat. They, you'd come really? out of a tray. Yeah, oh, I love me some oh, fried rice. Oh no, okay. I <laughs> they have I these my trays, answer. and they'd yeah. have a just a pile of rice. That's not nothing else. That's it. That's just rice. And what else did we have? Sometimes they would have. No, sometimes maybe, they would. Remember, they would have the mid rats cafe. So nope. mid rats was the term for food for the night crew. It was called the mid mid midnight it, rations. It was yeah. called the yes. midnight cafe. Midnight? No, I thought it was called mid rats. No, That's mid rats was cafe. just the normal meal that oh, would midnight happen. Midnight cafe. Midnight okay, cafe the is when there were yeah. so many people at the base that were staying for up all night every yeah. day that 
people would go to the galley because yeah. I mean, if you ate dinner at, at five five thirty, or if you were an int and you ate it at six to six thirty, um, by I two o'clock you. in the morning, you'd be hungry, and the can <laughs> and the canteen wouldn't stay open past like eleven o'clock at night. Yes. So people just started going in the kitchen and making food, being like. Yes. If I'm going to work, I'm going to go make myself a sandwich or I'm going to do. And the galley people start freaking out because they can't plan. And there anyway, was hundreds of people. <laughs> yeah. And so that we were stealing all the food for the week yeah. at nighttime. So David Miscavige ordered that they set up a cafe and make burgers and fries and hot dogs and coffee and sodas and milkshakes. It was like a 50s diner that only operated from midnight to like 2 a.m. Yeah, and that place was hopping at mid. You oh go walk in. At, you gosh. walk into the dining hall at one a.m. and there's like two hundred people in there yes. eating burgers and like living yeah, it up. And, and you're like, "What's yeah. going on?" He'd be like, "Well, they're sur- they're making burgers and like <laughs> we got burgers like uh, once a month or maybe yeah, mo- every was really- two months, and you could get burgers every. And of course, you had to pay for it, but I think it was like five bucks for a burger, fries, and a soda. Yep. And so if you weren't a smoker or you weren't a coffee drinker, you could probably, you know, throw five bucks and get a burger or whatever. Oh, but, my gosh. Um, yeah. So good. But, yeah, that was uh, that was a good time for a while there. Yep. Um, I liked Panuccio made tiramisu. Panuccio was the baker. Oh, yes. And he made tiramisu for my birthday one year. And it was authentic Italian tiramisu. And it was delicious. That's yeah. my favorite. Panuccio. I, we would, when, the, when we were in the night shift, we would go in there and we would – he would make special chocolate chip cookies for Dave, and we would eat those cookies all the time. <laughs> and go in there, Miss. Oh, that's great. All right, apostate Alex in the house. Love Hi. hearing all these crazy stories. It's great that now you can look back and find the humor in the insanity. It's so important to laugh. Yes, it yes. is. Yeah. Laughing's way funner than crying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely. Catherine Olson in the house. Hey, Mark. Catherine. You need to show the cartoon that John drew of you being carried up the stairs by Claire. <laughs> well, thanks for well, thanks for telling everybody, Catherine. Thank you very much for it's that. It's pretty funny. I'm I'm kind of famous or whatever the word is. Famous might not be the right word around here for my crazy habit of running up 200 stairs uh, multiple times a day here at our local incline. That's yeah, my it's, thing. I think it's called infamous is the word you're looking infamous. for. Infamous. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I do like four miles a day on that. On that. It's where I find peace. So <laughs> it was funny, though, because I'm carrying Mark up the stairs. And, yeah, I'll anyway. make a deal, Catherine. If I find the hall- the uh, costume photo, I will also show the sketch that your beau did of Claire carrying me up. The stairs. Um, nice. We had a party at our house. I can't remember. I think it might have been July 4th or a Christmas party. Something. It was July 4th. It was July, last July 4th. Last July 4th. We had yeah. a party. Well, Catherine and is it her boyfriend or her husband? Are they married or they're... Other, significant other. Significant, her partner. They decided to surprise us and show up. Un, like, I didn't know they were coming. It was going to be a surprise. Well, by the time they got there, I was at the sleepy part of the drinking process. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was out, and they li- they came in the house, and I was asleep on the couch, and they were like, "Hi, okay, I played, bye." I played hostess with the most, as I'm like, "Yeah, Mark's not in a talking mood right now. Sorry, I you should have given gone. us a heads up." <laughs> yeah, we started drinking at like one o'clock in the in the afternoon. That yeah, night. yeah, oh, exactly. We 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 have good parties. All right, Pete in Toronto. How often does Claire say to be clear? Yeah, I probably say that a lot. To that be might clear, be. to be fair, <laughs> to be yeah. clear. They yeah. everybody on the on when I joined in that uh, chatathon, everybody yeah. would say, "Oh, I'm from Clearwater, Colorado," or "I'm from oh, Cle- Clearwater." That. And I'm so, from Clearwater, Colorado. I'm from yeah. Clearwater, New York. I'm from yeah. Clearwater, Canada. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that was when awesome. I posted it and I said, "I live in Clearwater." Oh, <laughs> nice. That's awesome. I love that. That's the best. Kaz Ferns, I'm super les, but do have little crushes on Mark and Matt, especially when Mark starts on Depeche Mode stories. Wish Nora was on this chat. Love y'all. Oh, there Thank you go. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
All right, Stephen Britton. So they tore the whole set down around Mark and just left him there. And nobody bothered to come back to collect him. Exactly. It was so <laughs> bizarre to me. I, I almost thought, like, what happened? Like, where am I? Like, I uh, did I go into, a, like, a time machine? Wasn't there a stage here when I went under this? <laughs> I mean, you're 11 years old. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely, I like, got back. I think I was, it was just too much too full time for an 11 like i was i was working like 12 hours a day as a, at 11 years old oh. riding around the car and talking on the walkie talkie and giving out this mm -hmm. thing and i just like you guys are you know i'm 11 right you know like <laughs> i need to take some naps <laughs> <laughs> this is too much um just honey can you bump me out i'm gonna have to prematurely say bye Sure. Love you all. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Yay. We'll see you next Wednesday. Love you, AB and Matt. Yeah, see you later. Okay, we'll see you soon. Alrighty. We'll do more of these. It's fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. time. Oh, I kept saying heading remove and it didn't remove her. Um, do you want me to read them and you answer sure. them or how do you guys want to do it? Because well, I yeah, can. Um, you I go can, ahead and read them and I can do the little manage the little thing here. Perfect. Um, I'm st Juliana Bittencourt. I'm still tired from all the all nighter on Monday, falling asleep here, but loving the laughter. I always have love. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Yes, that yeah. she was Juliana was one of the. I mean, I yeah, logged yeah. in like four or five different times, and she was on every single time. Right. Um, yeah. You want to pull? There you go. Um, Cat and Maggie, Mark, which is better, Claire's bolognese or her Yorkshire puddings? Oh, the Yorkshire puddings we do together, and they are legitimately my favorite thing in the entire world. Wow. Ah. Yorkshire. We get some, um, we get like a, a bone in ribeye, and we cook up these little, you guys, next time, if you guys ever come, yeah. or if we, even if we come to um, Florida, we'll try to make these uh, Yorkshire puddings. You guys yeah. will love them. Oh, yeah. Definitely look forward to it. I heard a lot about him. Does Claire, Denver Stevo says, does Claire have a picture of butthead hanging on the wall behind her? That's freaking awesome. Good on you, Mrs. Headley. Um, the picture on Claire's wall behind her is one of our sons did that for, just did some, a picture. I think it might even be a self-portrait. None of my kids <laughs> look like that, but I think they I think they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Your son's painting of you reminds me of the artist <laughs> M Modi Modi Modigliani. Modig Modigliani. Anyway, yeah, that's what I've been told. That is his style. He that is how he paints. I'm sorry, he has the same style as that uh, Italian painter. <laughs> um, Robin Miner says, "Hey, my four faves, can you make a cartoon tea of the four of you in the SP shop? I watch all the SP TV channels and love you for all that your strength and laughter. You know, um, Claire actually has been in email communication with a a person who does the character caricatures, oh, uh -huh. which did the ones that we do have. So I'll I can ask Claire if she can he can get that guy to do she can get that guy to do another one. Um, he did the one he did for us. Um, he's really that's what he does for a living. Oh, he's, he he's so good. I have and mad respect for that. Talent. He just but sent it to us and we were like, well, hey, do it. Do we want it? You want us to pay you to be able to? And he was like, oh, no, you can keep it. I was like, oh, awesome. Wow. Crazy. K Casey. Um, I always call her <laughs> Casey, but her name is Cassie. Yes. Don't tell anybody, but I know how to say it. Um, <laughs> Cassie Isaac, love you all. Thank you, Cassie. She also, I think, um, uh, I will, I'll wait. Uh, Claire will know for sure, so I'm not going to say anything out of uh, okay. school. Uh, Maria de Jesus Gutierrez says, release form and guide to put on site I secured. Oh, my gosh, this girl. Uh, Maria, um, she, I, she sent a, a ton of great videos that we're using for a video that we're working on. Yeah. And I have a release form. I just have to put it in a file, and I just keep forgetting. Um, <laughs> okay, Maria. I got it. I made a note. I wrote it down. I have to write things down. Um, I love her name and, and the way she said on that video. Oh, life. my goodness. Yeah, there's like seven yeah. other names that she says. Because yeah. I don't think it'll fit in your profile to write all of the names. Right. Ann Taylor says, Mark, where did you get those spy files? Can you tell us? I got a bunch of them from... Um, some of them I think are from Marty Rathbun and some of them were from Mike, Rin from Mike Rinder. And the problem was is that the files were sort of, they were accidentally buried in another folder. So uh, for a long time, um, it wasn't really known how many of these files there were until I actually started going into every single folder and opening up 
because some folders had another 20 folders in it and some of those oh folders God. had another 20 folders in it and then some of those folders had another 20 folders in it it was the um the the you think with all the uh attention to organization they have up there over in uh, in the crazyville that they'd have some <laughs> sense of file organization and they do not and they don't right <laughs> and it's always like use this one final 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 last version um <laughs> use this exclam exclam that's the, how they name files at the, so um so i just happened to be digging and digging and then i just hit the mother load and it seems like the more i look i hit more even more and more and more so that's i don't crazy. know i personally i think this is the thing that's going to do it there's, there's yeah. just when you read some of these files there's no way you can say that these guys aren't up to no good there's just mm -hmm. it's just it's just not possible to think. I mean, to be able. If, and, the, and the only problem that I see is that they're in Scientologies. That's the part that I mm -hmm. see as the hurdle we have to get over is yeah. that they're written in code in sort. Just because there's a lot of abbreviations, there a lot of them are Scientology abbreviations, and they're also using code names and stuff like that. But once you know who all the different players are and who the mm -hmm. people are, it it's sort of it's very easy to decode them. Yeah, like on some of them, they'll say the, an initial, and I'm like, who are they talking about? But then they say who it is, like two paragraphs down, <laughs> their full name. That's the craziest part. I was just going to say <laughs> that. They use the person's code name for 75% of the document, and then in a target, like where the program is, they write the full name. So you yeah. know, because whoever's doing the target maybe not know their code name, so they got to know right. who the person is. And you're just like, this is so crazy to me yeah. that you would use the code name in the in the tr in the secret part of the documents and then mm -hmm. in the part that they have to kind of print out and distribute they just use the full name and that's what yeah. the secret documents are so just like <laughs> oh my goodness you guys this F -troop. somebody F needs troop. to send these guys to uh yeah f troop they need to send them to <laughs> espionage stool school or something <laughs> um angie says um or angie angie english um does see scientology fair game nine selling scientologists for speaking out against them thank you for all you do give mike my best yeah the only people that i that we found are if if you expose scientology like i don't think you could get in trouble nece even necessarily for like liking a video or something i don't think they're going to track you down if you do a magazine article or a tv show or a v video on youtube or you start saying things about your experience and you're going to show up on their radar something they're going to mm -hmm. at least look into it they're not going to do nothing um in the period where these files are though there was like there was probably 10 people doing that maybe 20 that were that were really causing them problems. Maybe 30 at the most. Now yeah. it's gotta be in the thousands at this point. Yeah, in terms yeah, totally. of just- They're overwhelmed. Because they there's a lot of- little guy there. Yeah, it, it, you can't go after someone, even now, I don't think you could just go after everyone who does a video because there's too many yeah. video. I mean, there's probably a hundred videos playing right now on YouTube that, <laughs> that just happened in the last week or two that are Scientology related, at least a hundred. How yeah. how can you take go after a hundred people who did videos, and probably you know eighty of those are from SPTV related channels, but yeah. then there's probably twenty or thirty that are just just people going like, hey, have you seen this craziness with Scientology lately? Yeah. and they yeah. just start talking about it. It's nothing mm -hmm. you can do, you know. Yeah, yeah, and there's more to come. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. It's this so is this more. year is going to be is going to be a good year for uh, yes. Scientology uh, exposing. It will be. Um, Nate Miniatures, um, love to hear the stories, which would love to see the four of you again. Is there anyone with Scientology you wish would blow and join in the fun stories from the past? Oh, I could think of all kinds of people that I would mean, be amazing. Um, and a lot of those people have gotten out, you know, to be honest, but is yeah. there anybody you guys remember that you would love if they were out here? I mean, or? I mean that. I want every single one of them to blow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I don't really have I want any. want Shelly to blow. <laughs> yeah. Even the people that I wasn't really friends with, if they escaped, I would help them and I would, you know, oh, I would oh, do totally. whatever I could and I'd give them, you know, tips and tricks and, you know, don't yeah. do this and do this and try to oh, stay yeah. away from this. But I mean, there's only a few, like Mark Yeager, I wasn't a real big fan of. 
he really just he had it out for me for years and years and years. So I'm not a big fan of him. I'd still help that dude if he came yeah, and said, hey, I'd still help him. Um, I don't really even Martin Reed. I'd help Martin Reed. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Yep. Um, you know, I, I feel the same way. Like just anyone that needs help getting out of that situation, I would help them because they turn into monsters because it's not necessarily their their nature. Yeah, you know? they, they just had the wrong mission. That's all. Yeah. they were they they were there for the right reasons. They just were doing the wrong the wrong yeah. work at the wrong time on the wrong page of the wrong but day there, of the wrong week, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> there were some that I, I you know might think twice about. <laughs> like exactly, that's why I said even when I was like Mark Rager, I, Mark Yeager, I wasn't we weren't the best of friends, and I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of his. But you know what? I'd probably still help him if he came yeah. and said it, it was like, dude, you're the only person who helped me I'd be mm -hmm. like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you came to the right place or not, but uh, I'll help you. <laughs> I, would, I would help him. He was my boss for like 18 years. You know, yeah, like, I might I might remind him of a few things that happened. <laughs> I might I might oh, that's, that's automatically happening. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, OK, I'm going to help you. But yeah. you remember that time when you tried to take me off post because that video <laughs> thing and da 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 and you uh, threw me under the bus? Yeah, not cool. I did not appreciate that at all. <laughs> L. Wint says, "What I meant is, can will government use these docs without proof it's from Scientology? Yeah, there's no question it's from Scientology. Oh, yeah. And the best part is that these almost all of these documents are in what's called." dispatch or report form so there is a to there is a from and there is cc's so even though it's a secret document in most cases it, it there are other people being copied on this secret document it's not um there are names on the documents that that yeah. let me tell you that there are names and there are post titles so it says this is the person it's from the post and then in a lot of them they are signed and they do say it's from Linda or it's from Kirsten or so. But the best part is, is if there were, were a legal action to be taken by anyone, law enforcement or an individual, because there's a lot of human rights that have been violated in these documents as well, mm -hmm. like wiretaps, okay. recording people without them knowing about it, um, spying, stealing garbage, breaking and entering. There's a lot of things that's going that are going on in these documents, which are 100 percent shady, if not just flat out illegal. Totally. So. If there was some sort of uh, lawsuit or investigation and there and these were um, asked for in discovery, they it is reasonable to say that they would have copies of them because they don't ever get rid of anything per policy. They're not allowed to shred things. Um, they're not allowed to destroy files or folders. They have to keep them. L. Ron Hubbard yeah. was very, very, very specific that you can never delete some of these things. And so... It's 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 you know it's plausible to say somebody could subpoena or d ask for them in discovery or however the legal process is and say we know you have copies of these and here's yeah. four hundred that we'd like to see copies of <laughs> it's 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 reasonable to also expect they can't have all four hundred be lost they're gonna have to show up with some of these copies they could sure enough say yeah well these twenty we don't know where oh. we don't know where that came from or where it went but. We but did the other ones at the end base for we did sh total shredding parties. We had containers like like the boxcar containers, like a like on that you have on a train. Yes, <laughs> all of documents that we had to um, vet, like cut out. I was just gonna say they weren't different. always shredding. It was cutting names out yeah, of documents. I remember that. Yeah, we did that. We did that, and we also shredded. Yeah, they had, so they put them in acid baths. Yeah, they I remember that when I remember one time they hired a service to do it, and it was a huge flap that they loaded the truck, and then the truck drove someplace to do it. So then they had to have it like, no, no, you got to. You got, no, you got to put it in the acid. You can't just give it to some guy in a truck. <laughs> you got to put it in the acid. Who drives off the property? I know it was like it was one of those things. Like we, everyone, oh, yeah, we'll it, don't worry. Well, that was the other thing is that they had this shredder at the Ent base, and, and this thing was so loud that you had to wear wear 
like race car um, ear protection so that you wouldn't go deaf. I spent hours in that room. And people would put phone books in this thing and jam it. It seemed to be jammed a hundred out of a hundred and one days. This thing would be jammed up. And so what would happen is you would get assigned a lower condition of treason if you did not do your shredding every single night. Yeah. Someone's job was to take that shredding and go shred it no matter what if you if they were being strict if there was shredding that was overflowing in your area someone's in trouble whoever's in charge of the shredding is in trouble so you'd bring the shredding you put it in a bag and you bring it down to the shredder if the shredder was broken you just drop it you're good you did your job you got it to the shredder like <laughs> hey sorry and the, the only kind of wishy-washy threat was if the shredding got found, like if somebody, when they fixed the shredder, usually somebody would just do all the shredding that was there. Whoever had like a ton of shredding would just do it all. But if your shredding got left and it was your stuff, then it, you just open the bag and you go like, oh, this is for manufacturing over the tapes department. And it looks like Headley's going to get lit. Because <laughs> everybody knew who the shredding guy was for their area. Everybody knew. You, you were, if you were the shredding guy, you knew all the other shredding guys. And um, there, But this machine was always... It was always uh, broken. A thing called a watch quarter station bill. And yes. it was it had a list of everybody's aside from your job, these are the other assignments that you get assigned. So Yes. Anyway. Yes. But those were usually those documents were only like internal to each other documents for the most yeah. part. We weren't shredding like issues or reports oh, or no, programs. No. It was just stuff internal between dispatches. us. Like mm -hmm. Amy was really mean to me today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. that was good. Straighten the shredder. <laughs> yes, straight to the shredder. Forever 43 N-E-R. Claire and Amy and the rest of y'all have made me brave to start my channel. Thank you, a.k.a. Lady BB. Yes, thank nice. you, Lady BB. That's really nice. Lady BB was, uh, I think, was in the uh, the, the chat on the, the chat a chat? Stacy okay, says, love your top, Amy. Where did you get it? From my mother-in-law. Oh, wow. Look at you. Fancy, <laughs> fancy over here. <laughs> Susie B says, happy to meet you, Matt. Love all SPTV. Thank you, Susan B. Thank Susan you. B, yeah. I've seen Susan B uh, on a few different uh, channels. I, I think she comments frequently, enough that go I over remember. To, go over to our channel, um, at who is Amy Scobie, and um, there is a, you know how you can put a bunch of videos into a playlist? I made a playlist of the escape stories that we did, and there's four of them, I think, um, which you would really, if you like Matt, you'll love those. We were laughing our butts off. Nice. Really, really fun stories. I do yeah. like that playlist functionality in the- Me um, too. Being able, I put you can do any videos, your channel, other people's yeah. channel, it can be anything. Yeah, and I put this series of the Wednesday nights, you know, Claire. Has its own playlist? I, yep. Nice. Um, FBC123Me says, LRH died on January 24th, 1986. Four days later, the space shuttle Challenger exploded. I heard the commander, Dick Scobie, was related to Amy. Um, yeah. yeah, you want to tell the story, Amy? Because this yeah. is pretty, I mean, David Miscavige, um, this is not a good story about David Miscavige. Yeah, well, I won't go into the whole thing. Yes, Dick Scobie is my uncle. Um, uh, he's my dad's brother and my his only sibling, his older brother. And um, so, yeah, he was on that flight. It was apparently good news that the Challenger blew up because it overshadowed the news of the Challenger explosion, overshadowed any negative public relations that uh, news organizations were to put out with regards to l ron hubbard dying so because he died just he just, died just a few days before yeah, that right so and and they were worried about a bunch of black bad pr because he also had psych drugs in his system and all kinds of other things and they didn't want any of this news getting out and it was like a lucky break well it wasn't so lucky for my family yeah but i remember yeah. that i remember hearing that about Oh, no one heard about it because that other thing happened. And it was mm -hmm. like, ooh, yikes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mark's met my aunt, June, who was married to Dick Scobie. I have. She is a yep. wonderful, wonderful woman. One of the one of the stupid um, fair game things that Scientology did was had my aunt June talk at a um, Writers of the Future without telling her it was Scientology. Yeah, Writers and of the so, Future is like a book contest that Scientology runs 
author um, services yeah. branch. And, and it's um, like a covert, you know, um, you know how they have like Citizens Commission on Human Rights and Narcan on all this. All these things are Scientology, um, but they're just under a cloak that that makes it so, it, you know, you don't know it right away anyway. So there's such scumbags. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go. Seneca. Thank you, Seneca. Um, exposing. Oh, uh, I loved your reaction to the get well card to Mike. That video was awesome. Yeah, they never sent that thing to me yet or they haven't. At least I haven't seen it. I checked my email, um, but I can't wait. I think they might be editing it or polishing it up or, or tweaking it or something. I don't know, but um, I can't wait to send it to Mike. Yeah, it's really good. Thank you for that, Seneca. Bo Beats. Hi, Mark. Has Mike, has Mike seen the video yet? No, I don't know if he has or not. He may have watched it already. I do not know. Um, I haven't. I, um, I mean, I chat with Mike all the time, back and forth with Mike and Christy. But um, I'm waiting to get the video before I say anything about the video. Right. I don't want to broach the subject. And then they go like, what? Uh, Bo Beats. Hey, Osa, show your boss my non-tandem first skydive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, um, why don't I get it? Um, she's just saying um, she she has a video. Just show somebody. You know, oh. just like like the, the that's the other funny thing is that um, we're kind of breaking the fourth wall because we know Osa's watching the videos. So yeah. the never ends. They're always trying to talk to Osa. They're like, "Hey, Osa, <laughs> how's it going, Osa?" You know, in the comments, it's so <laughs> hilarious to me that everybody is just like. Um, yeah, we know they're watching, so just yeah. say hi to them. <laughs> right. <laughs> VSP since 1970. Um, I was seriously harassed in Canada in the 70s for continually and relentlessly trying to get my brother and others to see that Scientology was a dangerous cult. Phone calls, day and night, stalking, etc. Yeah, oh. so that's where, that's a good point. That is another um, way you can get on their radar is yes. if you have a family member and I got to I, I, I try to say this as often as I can if you have a family member that's in Scientology don't write them nasty letters because then you will be kind of show up on their radar the way the way I suggest doing it this is just me everybody might have other people might have other ways to do it I suggest being very friendly with your family that's in Scientology and ensuring that they know that you have to tell them if you ever go on vacation or when you retire, you want to come visit us, or if you ever need anything, please, here's my number. This is where I live. This is my email. Whatever you can give them, I think that's the best thing that you can do for them because yeah. just knowing that there is some island outside of where they are, there's a place somewhere that they could go if they needed to go for enough time to figure it out, I think that would help a lot of Sea Org members just if they knew that because a lot of them think because they're doing their thing and they haven't talked to you for 15 years they think that you don't care about them that you're not related to them that you're yeah. not, not you're not part of their life so why would they care about you and maybe you don't care about them and maybe you don't write them but if you do care about them and you do genuinely feel that if they escape that you would help them then let them know that there is a place for them if they go on vacation or when they retire or if they're ever in the in the area. Don't say, hey, if you ever decide to break out of that joint, don't say that. You just say no, if, on vacation. It won't even make it or, to them. Yeah, we'll just say, they won't even see the, the yeah, we'll just say there's a family reunion coming up that we'd love for you to come to. That mm -hmm. is a the family reunion is a tough one for Scientology because if a family member is saying, oh, we're having a family reunion and you're invited, if they if you invite them every year and they don't come, you could say, hey, it's been four years since we've invited you and you haven't come as um, you know, is every if, if you're welcome, you know, you're welcome to come. We just we hope you're OK. We hope everything's good. We hope you're in good health. That sort of Scientology is like, hey, you got to go to this reunion because they're yeah. reading all of their mail before they get it. So mm -hmm. they read these things and they and sometimes these things get flagged and they say, hey, there's a situation with your family because you're not going to these family. You're like, yeah, could, I would never in a million years get approved. Well, you're getting approved. You're going to your family reunion. Yep. And yeah. and Kim here, she's going to go with you. It's like, Kim, who, I, I don't know. Kim. Kim's your new best friend and she's going yeah. with you to this family reunion. 
and uh, she's just going to be with you in case you need anything or you know anything. Uh, and and you know when you're there, you know like, oh yeah, she's she's going to be my babysitter, make sure I don't fly the coop. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But that's why I'm saying we have heard of Sea Org members going on family reunions when they hadn't for years. We're now hearing that they are because a family member contacted and said, hey, and they're doing this. So if you're if you have a relative, please do not antagonize them. Don't write them crazy right. letters, just letters of encouragement and support. And if they ever need a yeah. place to stay while they're on vacation or they're that that your place could be one of those places. And and exactly. um, yeah, that's what I suggest. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. We're almost there, guys. Ann Taylor says, love you guys. I'm a Neverin who has been following Scientology for over 20 plus years. In the early days, the websites used to disappear overnight. PPS, Mm -hmm. listening to BFG, so good. Thank you very much for that, Ann Taylor. Yeah, Yeah. they would literally have web, and that's in a lot of these documents as well, where they would be trying to figure out how to shut a website down or shut shut a message board down. And you're right, they would infiltrate some of these message boards and then just take the whole thing out and- um, Yeah. And, and it it's done. interesting some of the things that they would do in order to um, infiltrate let just, the. Let me just do the, this real quick so yeah. she doesn't miss whatever you're saying. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. Hold hi, on. Claire. I don't know. <laughs> One second. Yeah, she got oh set up, but I just wanted to make sure I saw her there, so I just beat, I just beamed her in like Scotty. I know. Um, I was like, wait, I wasn't ready. <laughs> I, don't, I wasn't even hooked up. I'm like, oh my gosh. I okay, was busy. So, I was busy doing important SP business. Sorry about that. Yes. Very SP. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So, say what you were going to say, Amy. Um, what was it? What were we talking? We about? were talking about um, helping people and the family members and busting them out. Or oh no, it was um, that last that last message. Oh, we, we lost it. But um, oh. so I forget. I forget what it was. She read the book. She said, "Listen to the book Audible." Are you going to do an Audible version of your book? That isn't what she was talking about. She, she said she was a never in. <laughs> oh, oh, was... When you see the the OSA, the uh, inside the OSA files, what they do on the message boards, like they'll oh, yes. pretend they'll just totally take over the message board with these um, uh, totally off topic subjects that gets everybody completely distracted and off the subject of Scientology. And so their targets say, S- do this, do this, do this on these programs. So yeah, they'll cancel the websites, so they'll overtake them, they'll distract, you know, put throw up all these distractions. And we saw that when on the um, clam- In real page, time. In real time when yes. it was happening. Yeah, that's, that is one of the things they did say in there. They had, I think it was on the Operation Clambake, which was called the OCMB message board or OCMB, the Operation Clambake message board. And they said that they had 10 uh, accounts set up on there to be able to to do that. So what they would do is they everybody be like, oh, my gosh, blown for good, wrote something. And then they'd be like, but did you hear about the thing that happened over at the at the Hollywood mm-hmm. building? And then everybody's like, oh, yeah, I saw that. And then so they have 10 people that get in this thing and everyone's like. What happened in Hollywood? What are they talking about? And he's just like, it's like, oh, these are their fake accounts, just like derailing yeah. the threads. Yes. Uh, but um, yeah, when you see them in the, do-, do you guys have all of the documents, or you just have the ones about you guys? Just the ones that you sent me. Um, oh, I'm that- going to send you all of them. Just so okay, can- and then we can just do searching because they well. call me all kinds of different things so it'll be different weird searches. Yeah, every once in a while I'll read a document that has my name in it, but they spelled it with a K. So that yeah. I never saw it because, and uh, like on my SP declare, it's spelled with a K. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I was there for 15 years. And I didn't even know spell my name. Like, come on, man. Um, I told you, you know, I went to Starbucks one time. I said, it's Mark with a C and I got the cup and it said Kark. It said C-A-R-K. C-A-R-K. Kark. Um, I was like, wow, Mark with a C, Kark. Okay, Starbucks. <laughs> really, uh, you guys are really hitting it out of the park over you here. Need, you know how to pick them. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll send you all of them. You will see okay. that there's like, there is insanity. Yeah, yeah. In we'll, we'll warn you right now. There's many very deep rabbit holes in oh, these yeah. files. Oh, it's, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Because I'm going to send Matt the FP. I'm just like, just here, I'll send you whatever yeah. I on there. Yes. The Forever 43 video. NER, please see my super chat for Claire. Thanks. Oh, please read, please read my... my super chat. How do you for go Claire? Back and find thanks. Them? I don't know. We, do, we read every single super chat. I know. They were saying to read it to me. Oh, uh, it was the p- picture behind you. Um, they love the oh, picture that, behind that's, you for, that's, for Grayson. Um, so here, that's, that's Grayson's 
self-portrait. See? Yeah. Uh, and it's it is Mad Madigliano. Somebody yeah, there commented. you go. See, I told yeah. you, Claire knows yeah. exactly the style. She's yeah. she's up with all this stuff. She's wow. a, a artsy for artsy. Yeah. Folks. So Grayson is a very talented artist. Okay, here you got to put up these last chats because okay. it answers the questions. Are you talking? Are you taking these files to the FBI? To tell you the truth, the FBI has had these files for way longer than I have. So, mm -hmm. um, I think um, I'm not sure exactly who at the FBI was given them, um, but the FBI does have a lot of these files, yep. as, as far as I know, as far as I have been told, they do have it. What I'm doing now is I am categorizing them. I'm sharing them with the, 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 the people that they're about. I'm sharing them with the politicians they're about. I'm sharing them with the law enforcement that they're about. I'm sh I'm giving them to everyone who's involved in them, whether they know it or not. And I'm just trying to get somebody to talk about these things because yes. anybody that I give these files to, their mind is blown. I'm one one for one. There's not one yeah. person who's read these files that understands Scientology. That's not just like, oh, why aren't they? Why uh, why are not government no vehicles on? driving onto their property right yeah. now? Yeah. Like, what yeah. what is going on in America and, and that these guys can just do? There, it's basically. Um, they have these little Guantanamo bays all over the United States. They got people yeah. all locked up. And mm -hmm. the people that are telling everybody, hey, there's Guantanamo bays all over the place. And these people are locked up. They're trying to destroy our lives. And they are yeah. documenting every little step of it. So yeah. yes. it's, it is literally <laughs> unbelievable. You, could, you couldn't, is. if you, it, it, it's just, it's one of those things Man. just like, how is this happening? <laughs> and I told the FBI, I said, I will translate anything. I know, you know, I yeah. speak that language. <laughs> yes. yes, I know. It is like a different language. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, man. Marilyn says, Steve-O is being a perfectionist, LOL. He is doing a little more editing to the video, but it's the third hour mark of the chat-a-thon on our channels. Yeah, I know that. I didn't, I, listen, if somebody's making a video and it's their video, I don't want to share it with the person it's for until that person wants me to do it. So I know how that is. If I did a video and I wanted to make some tweaks to it, I'd wish that he, he could see the final version. So um, right. that's exactly why I assumed he hadn't said, he knows I'm going to get the email and I'm going to send it right to Mike. So yeah. I'm ready whenever he wants to send it to me. Yep. Um, thank you, Marilyn. I knew it. I knew that. I was just guessing, but yes. Okay, this is the last and final one. Selena Michelle again. Thank you, Selena Michelle. Yay. Super duper frequent flyer. We're going to have to upgrade her to first class. I mean, that's yeah. just how it is. <laughs> um, um, and um, this has been an awesome life. Thank you, guys. There's one other one. And, and now I remember that forever was it was about Claire. It was about the video. The message for you was about Forever 43 is going to start her channel. It's going to start her channel. Awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yes. She the said more that voices, it was, the better. Every right. voice yeah. counts. More the merrier. Every she said voice you counts. inspired her to do her channel. Oh, that's so, amazing. Thank yes. you. Yes. This was I a ton it. of fun, guys. I'm probably it the was. one who just talked the entire time, as people <laughs> always tell me. But I tried to uh, listen to all of Matt's stories about beer. And um, <laughs> yeah, so. No, this was amazing. And it, it was it's great. nice to know that there were actually some fun times before we got there. It's a shame we missed yes. them, but you know. I mean, yeah. I, I made a list and I never even got to them. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We'll have to do a part two. How about that? Well, we yeah. can do Yes, yes, yeah. yes, no problem at all. Um, very much fun. And so now I've got, there's the ticker. So subscribe to both of our channels. Yay, so subscribing. Yes, and then let's go over here because I'm going to um, play. I have a little outro that I'm going to um, Is this play a premiere, an outro premiere? No, I mean, I did it last week. Oh, but this okay. is premiering to you, Mark. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I everyone. I can't wait. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. That was not time. It was a little loud for me.